Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the show. Gabriel with us. This is Encounters, the number one spiritual UFO talk show on social media. I'm Commander Alian, your host. Another another night. This is uh, now, <coughs> excuse me, another great night going into Tuesday. Uh, you know, definitely a great night to be here. Hey, Jan R., everybody coming in. We welcome you all on the number one spiritual UFO talk show consistently on here. Uh, well, most nights at 11. Sometimes we're a little bit early. Sometimes we're a little bit late, but we're you know, usually on here. And sometimes we take a break because <laughs> we have to. Rachel, welcome to the show. Tanya, everybody coming in. Welcome to Encounters. We're just uh, getting in here, just getting on here, so to speak. So we're just beginning the show. And of course, we got a whole gallon of apple cider. Hey, Chesno, good to see you, brother. Chesno's also one of our five and also one of my uh, uh, people that are moderators here, keeping things straight, so to speak. Catherine, good to see you. Stu, uh, Amina, everybody out there, welcome. Good to see everybody coming in here. Please share and like. Uh, we want to get to 100,000 likes as usual. Uh, before 1 a.m. in the morning, and we can do that when you tap the screen. You're tapping, look at the top right, it says 448. We're going to make that go up to 100,000 before the night's over. April, uh, good to see you. Good evening. Good evening to everybody coming in here. We made it through Monday, and if you're a working person, that's probably a good thing, right? Whatever you're doing, it's good that you got through Monday. Absolutely, without a question. I've got a video that shows, uh, this is uh, recorded in July from a anonymous source from what used to be Twitter called X. And uh, I found this video that the person posted got from an anonymous source. And uh, the video shows these UFOs going over daytime over military base in Colorado. And this is back in July. Now, this is the good stuff, you see. And evidently, nothing happened. There was no Air Force jets chasing them or anything. They just going over. They were still moving. They weren't hovering. And they went right over a Air Force base or a military base. So I'm going to be showing that video tonight for educational purposes only. Of course, you know that, right? For entertainment or educational purposes only. So we don't have TikTok freaking out over it. You know, we don't have that happen, right? Hey, Gloria, good to see you. Amy. Jacob Ladder, uh, Gloria, user 2121, uh, good evening, Nabia, Nabila, Julia, welcome, Mario Gomez, welcome, Nancy Christian 6, welcome, uh, Bick, uh, Bicker Markle, welcome, uh, Christer, or Chris, or Christ something, anyway, welcome, Scott, thank you for the follow, everybody out there, One Truth, Truther, good to see you, I see all the people here, Frank Ryder, Mario Gomez, how are you doing? Yes, we're doing great. I hope you're doing well. Eventually you shall, and I think everybody will see uh, what we call UFOs or spaceships. Everyone's going to get there. Hey, Jennifer, uh, good to see you. Welcome, Terry1972. Welcome, Terry. Holly D, uh, technician. Hello, technician. Alan Cornett. Hey, Alan. Uh, Stacy Hayes, welcome. J80. Uh, Beast with something, Bruce Morris, uh, let's see, Maga Gaga, welcome Maga Gaga, that's interesting, Papa Joe, welcome, Joey, welcome to the show, DP Busy, Joe JJ59, Gaming Central, that's a good name, Gaming Central, Troy Briggs 400, just everybody out there, whoever you are, you are welcome here on this show, we invite everybody from all over the world here. So you're going to find this is a very inviting kind of program. This is actually a talk show versus just a TikTok person on here uh, throwing uh, disco balls around in a room or something. Uh, so, yeah, you're welcome to join us. Starcy, greetings and blessings to you. Also, I'm host of WESU's Cosmic Eye Radio for 21 years on NPR Pacific Radio here in the United States. And also a contactee. So I've had direct contact visually 
with good space people, positive space people. And I would say since the 60s, I probably have had hundreds of what you call UFO sightings. Uh, and that's going many years, you know, since I was a kid. April, hey, good to see you. Help humanity heal. Hey, help humanity. Ah, oh, man, it was great. Uh, it was great helping you and uh, definitely dealing with the implant. I was, you know, now you can really help humanity, right? You know, no more implants. Now he help humanity can really help humanity, which is a beautiful thing. No more interference with the, the light work, with the good work that the help humanity will do for folks. Hey, Gary uh, Falk, good to see you. Kelly, Paula R, greetings. Hey, Paula. Hey, Denise. Hey, everybody. You know, first of all, I want to just say we love our audience. We love all of you out there around the world. I don't care if you're in Russia, China, wherever you are, come on in. If you're interested in knowing the truth about what's happening out there in the subject of ufology on a very spiritual level and not just nuts and bolts, you know, we have the information here. We have stuff that you're not going to know about pretty much anywhere else. You know, everyone talks about, uh, you know, on YouTube and every else, other place, they only, they have the discussions about, well, what this could possibly be when we already know what's going on, right? And if you watch my show for almost two years, hey, California, hey, Bobby, good to have you with us. Welcome, brother. Everybody coming in here, you know, when you watch this show, you know you're going to get stuff and you're going to get information that you're not going get, to get anywhere else. And why is that? Because, you know, you're dealing with somebody who is also activated, who's a contactee, who's actually remembering where they're from, you know, remembering that we're not just from Earth and that we have a mission here. So integrating that with my space consciousness and my human consciousness has been very easy to do. You know, it's like you can switch consciousness. You go from space consciousness when you need to, and then when you have to deal with the 3D world, you go to human consciousness. Hey, Richard and Houston, good to see you. Hey, I appreciate that. Help humanity heal. I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you and all the work you're going to do. And I know you're going to help a lot of people wake up, which is a good thing. Uh, UFOs are not beings. UFOs are spaceships. Well, there's, there's a thing here. Let's put it this way. Forgetting the term UFO, spaceships, there's some spaceships from the higher frequencies of light that are created by consciousness. So uh, the spaceship is a collective of space people creating the spaceship, but the space people are still in the ship. Those are more advanced spiritual beings of light uh, that do that. They're not nuts and bolts craft, so to speak. So I think, Jesse, I think I understand what you're trying to say. Um, oh, good. Good there, help humanity, you know? Good, good, good. That's what we like to hear. Ev evidently, a lot of good stuff going on. Hey, Mike Masters, good to see you. Good to see everybody here on the number one spiritual UFO talk show. Lori, welcome. Linda, evening to you. Uh, Haley Robinson, welcome to Encounters. You know, we've been on here for, it will be almost two years. When we get to January, I can't believe it. When I first started here, I had no idea what I was doing. Notorious, good to see you. We'll be a, been on here for two years, going on three. In 2025, it'll be three years here doing this show. That's crazy. But it was the right move to be here, you know. Hey, Lafina Hudson, welcome. Hello. Richard, Jenny, M828. Clayton Williams, thank you for the follow. Thank you, uh, Mike Masters. Ah, I think Richard Morris is going to be our first guest. He says, my friend's dad was a member of Project Blue Book. Let's see if we can bring, I am 20 years old, Army vet, and current data technician. I, th I think, Richard, I want to bring you on. If you have information about that, that would be great. We can talk about that to start. That is really kind of cool. Uh, this is Encounters. The way it works, if you're going to be a guest, is you have to be over 18. Uh, of course, and no foul language, no cursing, no drinks, no drunks, no smoking on the show, no uh, drugs, no paranormal discussion, no religion, no politics, and no kids. 
That's that's the rules. And no and no trolls. Uh, so let me see. I'm going to follow Richard. Richard, I'm going to bring you up here the way I do it here. I, I'm very spontaneous. I'd like to hear anything you know about that. Uh, Richard Morris, my friend's dad was a member of Project Blue Book. Let's talk about that. Absolutely. Hey, Richard, welcome to Encounters. How are you? We're doing well. Yourself? Uh, well, I've got a minor problem at the moment, but I'll deal with it. <laughs> All right, well, we thank you for your service, I by the way, too. Thank you. I just dropped my eyeglasses under my couch. No, we don't want that happen. I think I, I think maybe we've done that before. Uh, so tell us, this is very interesting. How much information do you know about uh, your friend's dad, who was a member of Project Blue Book? Well, uh, not as much as I would like, but like I said, when, uh, I made a comment earlier about there was a sighting that me and my friends had in uh, Michigan back in 1984. We were all sitting up on my roof of my house. Yeah. And there was uh, there was a lot of sightings back then about the, the three green triangles that a lot of mm -hmm. people were seeing. Mm-hmm. And we all saw those over top of my house. Oh, wow. And, and what? my buddy was just like, okay, well, he's like, he's like, I got to go home. I'm like, mm. well, okay. <laughs> well, why? And he's like, well, I just got to go. And the next day, his, his, a couple guys showed up at our, at our houses and they were like, okay, well, like, what did you guys see? We told what we saw, and they were like, well, we don't want you to tell, we don't want you to talk about this with anybody else. Really? And it was like, they were like, you need, you just, you know, forget what you guys saw. It was just, a, you know, it was airplanes from Sulphur Air Force Base, which is kind of not that far from where, where, where I live. And they were like, it's just right. Air Force jets, ignore it. And I'm like, yeah, no. And you, you know, you, wait a minute. And what were these guys? What were these people wearing that were uh... just like business suits, but they were in like a back black sedans? Black sedans and business suits, definitely men in black. And they just showed up, and they were like, you know, like, hey, you know, like, tell us what you guys saw. And it was like, and they were three, you know, really bright green triangles. Yeah. In formation and. Bunch of people in Michigan all saw them. It was all reported. Wow. And they were just like, well, you know what? You know, this is what it was. Don't talk about it anymore and act like you never saw it. That's all they did. They didn't they didn't do anything but tell you not to talk about it. No, they just said like this this is what this is what this is what it was. And don't be don't be concerned about it any, anymore after that. But I've I've seen reports. You know, I'm 58 years old now, and yeah. you know, I've seen I've seen reports of the same sightings in multiple areas throughout the United States with, with those same green triangles. Really? So, so you kind of go, seen, well, wait a minute. <laughs> so you've seen you've seen Richard these green triangles in multiple places around the United States, correct? Oh, I, I've I've and I've heard reports of it. I've heard reports. So you know, when you have I've heard of my, and I well, you know, I was stationed in uh, Georgia. I've I saw him down there. I've seen, you know, mm. it just kind of makes you wonder. And, and like and like, oh, people always tell me like, oh, well, you know, we're there's 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 no other life out in the universe. Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, think about how big the galaxy and the universe is. Right. For us to believe that we are the only intelligent life form on the entire in the entire galaxy, right? That's pretty ignorant. <laughs> it is kind of ignorant. So how and many sightings? In, okay, <laughs> go ahead. And how many sightings have you and your friends or you yourself had uh, over the years? Oh, I, I, I mean, I know. I I do a lot of I do a lot of paranormal investigations and stuff. Also, so. I've seen a lot of stuff in my yeah, we life. We stay away from the we stay away from the paranormal, but the UFO well, stuff is our main focus. I I have gone I've gone to many locations where people say they're haunted. Yeah, or, we stay away from that. 
there's stuff going on that they don't understand. Yeah. And yeah. some of what people think are paranormal could also be abductions. Right. Right. So it can be, you know, I, I've, I've experienced a lot of stuff that easily makes me believe that there's a lot more going on out there that people will, will write off because they, they don't, they don't want to believe it. Right. Well, that's a part of it. The, it. We have more, I mean, 30 years later now, you know, 30 years ago, if there was a TikTok, maybe this kind of stuff wouldn't have been mostly talked about. 30 years later in 2024, people are ready for this. People want that uh, people are interested in people are having people have been abducted. I've interviewed people um, on my show over the last two years here that have been abducted and people that have had positive contact with space people as well. I've had it on both ends of it. Uh, it's pretty amazing when you hear the stories. Well, yeah, I mean, but it, I, and like people are like, oh, well, you know, they they don't they don't why don't they they don't come out and just make contact with in the open well look, look at the uh, history of the human race if you're right. a more advanced civilization than, than us mm-hmm. and you look at what what the human what the human race does do we do it ourselves yeah Would well you, you know want the to make thing, contact with us? and the thing is though there is going to be we, contact in 2026 richard i don't know how much you know about what's going on right well, now we we i mean we kill everything we don't understand <laughs> right. well that's that's going to actually that's actually going to stop that's when the space people come and they are here now they're already already here they are in our oceans they have cities in our deep are about several locations uh they also have space cities in our our atmosphere that are hidden uh and also um they're already they've been here for billions of years not in the largest amount of ships but a lot of their ships are now cloaked around the planet um i don't know how much you know if you yeah. how much you watch my show but there's going to be contact in 2026. Well, I'm saying, as a more advanced race i mean would you would you want to make contact with us i well they are that they're going to and the reason why is I they're going to st- that well they're going to there's a reason why they have to because it's supposed to happen we're not supposed to be separated from the star people we're supposed to be a uh, part of where they are. We're not supposed to be a separate planet in our own little world. We're supposed to be part of a much bigger thing. You're going to see this as you watch my show. You're going to find out a lot more about what's going to go go down. You know, it really is going to happen. As violent as we are, I'd be like, yeah, they're not running yeah. yet. Yeah, but the <laughs> violence is not going to be allowed. There's going to that. There's going to be a big shift in consciousness before the contact happens. And they're not going to let weapons be used against their ships. They're not going to let any of that stuff happen. I can guarantee you that there's going to be contact. Well, it's going to happen. You might wondering how I know this. Well, I'm I'm just saying that part. I I I don't like the idea of somebody being able to overrule. No, no, you don't over. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's put it this way. To the point where, where we can, where we we choose to do that on our own. That, yeah, well, no, we're not. There's not going to be an overrule. There's no ruling, and that's all. All that well, negative fear you can't based. Say within one year, we're suddenly becoming, we're suddenly human, a non-violent species. That's, I didn't say we were, but I'm saying that there's going to be contact, and it's being done in a very beautiful way to get people ready. They're doing it very carefully. Their ships are going to be seen over the oceans along the shoreline just to get people not to be afraid. And then when okay, contact time be, happens, then it will happen. That sounds a lot like a, the, the plot from the movie V. Um, forget, <laughs> yeah, forget, forget all the sci-fi garbage No, I'm out just there. saying that you're, what yeah. you're explaining right there is that, that's, the, that, that's like the whole plot from the movie V where they, they showed up above the oceans and said, Hey, we just we just need some of your resources. We're here peacefully. Don't attack us. And then they overtook the planet. You see, but see, if you go by that philosophy based on I'm a not, sci-fi that's movie, not a philosophy. I'm just I, that's what you're explaining. No, and what I'm I, explaining is not. I'm not explaining okay. that at all because V's. I watched I'm the V movie. movie. I watched the V movie and I watched the series when it was out, and it was well produced. But that is that's not the, exactly the same thing I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is spiritual people that are human beings that are about seven or eight feet tall that have families on other planets they're human just like we are 
The only difference is they live in peace. They're, they live in a center with the creator of all the planetary systems. You know, there are these people that are in the belief system that God only created Earth and God only created us. That That's the biggest lie of the century. If people believe that, that's a self-centered belief system. I'm not saying well, you believe that or I believe that, that believe, but there are a lot of people. No, I, I'm a I'm a pagan. Actually, I, I don't I don't believe in the cat the the cursing God. I I I'm, I'm my belief system is completely different. But if you if you bring a race here that tells everybody on this planet that God doesn't exist, and their God and their God is the true belief system, they're going to revolt. Yeah, they're but the thing is, that. you have to understand something. All these things, paganism, other isms, it doesn't matter what those isms are. They're all based on a 3D concept. If you get out of all your isms on Earth. You people on Earth that believe that God is the, the ultimate thing, or Muslims who believe that Muhammad is the ultimate thing. You cannot, somebody cannot come to this planet and go, you're all wrong, and our God is right, and you're going to now follow us and expect a peaceful transition. Okay. Okay, so happen. okay, so this is the problem. Is is with the word "follow us." So you keep using this word "control" and "follow." But, like there's there's someone that's, that's going to do this. Saying. They're going to come no, here, and, and you're just no. I'm I'm, go, I'm, a, oh, I'm glad to have this conversation right. with you. I think we have to with, with with something like this. Okay, you don't get it. It's not about your it's god or that god well. or his god or their god. It yeah. has. There's one god that created the whole universe, not just Earth. Created Earth. everything. You're you're trying to tell Catholics that their God is not the same one that the the new alien species follows. There They're are no aliens. Let me let me explain something. There are no aliens. That's an Earth-based media terminology that was created on this planet. Oh my God! Aliens do not exist. Humans. Would you like to be called an alien or a human being? As far as far as this planet goes, I'm no. I'm just in general. Would you like Would you like to be called an alien wherever you are, or would you like to be called a human being? If I if I go if if I were to if I were to leave Earth, go to Saturn, I'm an alien. No, you're not. You're a people human being that on, went to Saturn. People who live on Saturn are the indigenous life form to that planet. I'm alien. You're not, you're not an alien. You're you're, you're, you're you're a space being that came from Earth to go to that planet. You're not an alien. You're an alien. No, you're not. Okay. That, that's mm -hmm. a, so if you study the word alien, that's an Earth-based media word that was created on this planet by the media. It never existed. Is... Not a concept. It's a reality. No, it's not a reality. It's your opinion. That's you're not an, an opinion. Uh, not at all. Uh, Either you oh, believe that God. extraterrestrials are, exist or you don't. I, I didn't, I, I said, extraterrestrials do exist, but you can still be an alien life form to a planet if, you, if you're not from there. It's no, not a, I'm just, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a, if I were uh, someone going to another planet, planet B, and I landed on their planet, let me explain something. If I landed on that planet, and I came out in a spacesuit, and I looked human, am I an alien or a human? You're an alien to that planet. How do you know that? Because you've never been there before. No, I'm a human being. I went to that planet and met somebody else that might be a human being on that planet that never met me before. <laughs> I'm an extraterrestrial. I'm a being, not an alien. I'm a being. There's a difference. No, there's not. There's a big difference. Okay, well, what then what's the difference between an alien and extraterrestrial? Well, if I tell you something right now, either you're going to believe me or you're not going to believe me, and that's absolutely I, fine. November 10, 2019, you were arrested. If I tell you something now, it's either you're going to say, oh, wow. I don't wow. know why you're so offended by the word alien. That's what I'm no, trying to figure out. Alien doesn't exist. If you talk about extraterrestrial beings or, mm -hmm. or space beings or light beings, that's exactly what exists. There are no such thing as aliens. They do not exist. They don't. Uh, okay. Uh, I, uh, we're, we're, talking we're talking semantics here. If you believe life forms other than Earth people live on other planets and there's these UFOs coming over a base that you've seen, who do you think is in those spaceships? Who do you think is in those spaceships? Someone who's never been to this planet. 
That's right. Someone who's never been to this planet, not aliens, someone who's never been to Earth. But either way, alien or I don't understand why you say why you think alien is an insult or offensive. No, it, it, because I it's like if you went up to somebody in another country and called them a name and it insulted them, they would be insulted. So why celestial but, so celestial beings, country, extraterrestrial say, beings. You're a Spaniard or you're alien to my environment. No, no. I'm not alien to your environment. I came to your environment from okay. somewhere else I'm, I'm to explore not, your environment. That doesn't mean I'm an alien. You're you're calling me an alien. I'm not calling myself an alien. Oh, he left. He left. You know, I really sometimes have to get into these discussions with people. You know? I think, uh, you know, my what I'm saying is true. It's not my opinion. It's the truth. You know? But, hey, look, if you can't take the heat, <laughs> he just flat out left on his own. I didn't do anything. I didn't even do anything. I, I wanted to have that discussion. You know? And it's all good. I stood my ground because I know what I'm talking about. And he says, why do you get offended with the word alien? I don't think anybody in outer space, including my father on a spaceship, would like to be called an alien. Because they're not aliens. They're human beings. They're people. They're people from other planetary systems. If anyone was getting offended, he was. He couldn't, he couldn't handle the heat. <laughs> you know? Let's see now who here. Templar K. Uh, Templar K. Can you? Uh, I'm going to bring Templar K up. Let's see what Templar K is going to say here. Hello, Commander. How you doing? We just had a, a most exciting. Oh, exchange. I heard. <laughs> uh, I was trying to tell them in the comments, like, why do you think they're coming out with soft disclosures so then everybody is ready for it? You know. Yeah. Like. I understand what he was saying, but then I, you know, you what you're I saying about the alien thing is is right. You know, they're they're not aliens. They're they're other human beings, celestial yeah. beings, beings of light. Like, but um, yeah, like because that's why they're doing soft disclosures right now. Because if they were to just come straight out, people are going to be upset because they base their whole life off of isms, as you said. Isms. You that's know. right. I say isms, right? The isms. So, you know, that's why the government's been doing a soft disclosure on everything so they can prepare us for when when the encounter comes, when we uh, get the meter makers, so to say, you know, well, you know what, Templar, you know what the thing is? Uh, I've been on here for about two years. I've been in I've been a contactee since I was a kid. I've seen many spaceships. Um, and I've also because uh, I've also been involved in our group of five with my friend April and what we're going to be doing. I, I, I wanted to tell him if he was still on what was going to happen, but he left too quickly for me to get to that part of it. But the thing is, and I am really amped up right now. So the thing is, you know, it's not so much, it doesn't matter what the government tries to do, like the soft, the soft disclosure. They, they basically have told people absolutely nothing in the last 70 years of cover up. Then they have these UFO hearings then the Pentagon a few years ago admitted that they were secretly watching the subject of UFOs or the, the UAPs that they want to call them. The fact of the matter is, in 2026, we're going to have the beginnings of contact. And, you know, people need to get ready for that. And it's not a belief system or a channeling of information. You know, you watch my show. You know, you watch my show. You know it to be true. Yeah, I've been watching you forever. I used to be Robbie. I was actually up here one time yeah. telling the story about the dream I had. Yeah, 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 I remember that. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I mean, people that have been watching my show know what's happening here. People like Richard, you know, we still, we send our love to him and everything. He just didn't get to the point where I could get to him to get to that point of explaining to him some stuff. He still wanted to believe in the V movie. He explained, he used that analogy, which has nothing to do with the space people, you know? No, nothing at all. <laughs> And I have bot Botanic Beauty. We're going to bring Botanic Beauty has a few encounters and communications. 
we're going to get her up here because now we're going to get to some people that are really having some things going on here. And the commander is totally amped up. I've been amped up before I got on here. And when yeah, Richard's man. On, I love seeing you, you amped know. up. Oh, I'm amped up right now, man. Just watch out. Right, Whoever bro. you are out there. Thanks for letting me you... up. <laughs> I am totally amped up here at 1124 at night. Uh, okay, yeah, do man. your thing, we're man. Gonna, we're going to let you down. And All I'm right. going to, you know, let me just say this. I don't. I I I like to have those discussions with people like that because number one, that gives me the challenge to challenge their belief systems. You know, I get to challenge their three D belief systems, their so sci fi movie deal and all that garbage. You know, but I am amped up here, man. So let's uh, let's see what's going to happen here. I'm going to bring up botanical person here, uh, uh, botanic beauty. I've had a few encounters and communications now i know this is going to be really good so we're going to do this thing hey botanic beauty how are you doing oh hola how are you we're doing good can you talk more into your phone okay uh oh mm -hmm. are you with me oh uh, yeah what's going on here a little apprehensive. Wait a minute. What's going on? All right. That was getting a little bit weird. I think that was getting a little bit weird. I have a feeling this is going to be a very strange night. I believe we're going to have a very strange night. Because <laughs> uh, she said in her thing that she's had, this is what she said. Thank you, Starseed. She said, maybe just a little bit. Botanic, what, maybe just a little bit of what? <laughs> then she said to me, I saw a V1, vastly misunderstood beings. Um, botanic, I'm a little bit confused about you. She was apprehensive. Oh, my goodness gracious. I know we're going to have a strange night tonight. But uh, when she was on with me, she sounded cool. She sounded a little bit weirded out. You know? A little bit weirded out. You know, I'm pretty, I pretty much sense people when I have them on my show. I don't know if I should do that. <laughs> yeah, I do take command of it. Hey, thanks, Sebastian. Said it's because she was apprehensive. She sounded like an AI. She didn't even sound human. She sounded like an AI. You know, like a robot or an AI speaking to me. I, that's not happening. <laughs> now I got AIs coming on my live. You got to be kidding me. Hey, Lynn, 948. Man, I am so amped up. Hey, Melissa Neal, good to see you. Let's get this cosmic spaceship out in space. Hey, Tammy Richards. She was speaking in her cosmic being voice. Maybe. No organic being. No organic being. Uh, let's see. Uh, Botanic, are you an AI? Are you AI? Artificial intelligence? I'm very curious. No, not tripping. Are you an AI or a human? No, you're not, no what? You're not a human or you're AI? This is getting interesting, folks. And, we, you know, we've got over an hour and a half here, so hey. Maybe she is from a different country. 
uh, uh, don't know how to um, convey. So let me ask you, botanical beauty, are you an extraterrestrial being? Or are you not? Are you AI? If you're not AI, what are you? It was a robot. It sounded like a robot. Oh, she isn't from the U.S.? She said American. Texas girl, what is her page page like? She was a robot or a Zeta, I think. Not a robot at all organic. She says she's organic. Huh. Born in America. The videos are not speaking English. I'm going to give her another chance. I want to find out what's going on here. But if things go south, in the picture, it looks like an AI almost. Let me take a look here. We're going to, I am a poet, you my, you my muse. Hmm. Okay, folks, you asked for it. We're going to do this thing. If we go south, hey, Botanic Beauty, uh, can you hear me? Hello, um, Commander. Is that the proper way to address you? Yes, it is. I'm Commander Elion. Well, I'm not sure how to say that. Commander? I had a neck, so... Commander. Alion. A L E O N. Alion. Alion? Yes. I'm just having a little bit of um, uh, linguistic um, thing about where it's like frequencies of emotions, if that makes any sense. But Can you turn I your. Can you turn your camera on? It's a little dark, but I don't know how to do that, to be honest. Okay. Um, oh, wait, or wait, there's that thing. Okay. Oh, there's she's, that. okay, so you are a real person, okay. Oh, oh well, you know, it, you know, my arm's broken. I really don't want to move around very much. Mm -hmm. So tell me about yourself. You were talking about encounters. Are you having direct visitations with space people? Um, they seem nice enough. I mean, but there is one encounter that I'm just like, whoa. That was like really neat though, but I don't know how to explain it at all. It's hmm. like, I was with my former husband Well, we were like initially like dating. It's okay, really so hurry, but um like it's so it was just so weird. Have you have you had encounters with any extraterrestrial beings? Yeah. I just wanna talk about that one pleasant experience though. But then also at the same time, it's kind of weird because like with like my sister. Okay. I'm telling you, man. I'm not quite sure. We can't see her. No light on. And before it goes south, I, I definitely don't want to go down that road. You know? Yeah. It's uh, just something very weird. Forget about that. You know, I think uh, whatever's going on is not happening here. <laughs> uh 
Yeah, I, I'm going to. Um, yeah, something very strange with that whole thing. No judgment, just very strange. Just extremely strange. Anyway, let's continue on. Now, to be a guest, a real guest, all right? Yeah, so, okay. But even if she can put the light on, it's what she's saying that has me concerned. So we're not going there. So if you've had any sightings of spaceships, if you've been having real visitations with space people, we want to definitely hear it. Uh, if you've had encounters of any sort, we want to hear it. You know? I'm definitely going to have to do this thing here. Yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going there. I got to go with my own sensibilities here, folks. You know? Trust me, I'm pretty good at judging things. Let's see who else we got coming up here. Ah, oh, Ryan. Ryan's been on here before he was on last night. Ryan, we'll bring Ryan on. I know who he is. Welcome back, Ryan. How you doing, brother? Um, I'm I'm doing good. Um, there was a story last night that um, I forgot to um tell you about um it's not specifically a um contact story but um, mm -hmm. um i took a picture of a star and um when i zoomed in it kind of looked like um <sighs> there was like a brown dot in the middle of it and then it was like, um, it seemed like there was some kind of like opaque gelatinous substance surrounding it. I don't know mm -hmm. what that was. And when, when was this? Where, 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 when did this happen? Um, oops. We lost our guest. I don't know what happened here. I'm okay. still here. Okay, good. Um, I was trying to... Um, I have the exact date on my phone for those photos, so I'm just going to okay. take them real fast. And you're watching Encounters uh, here on a Monday night. Good to have everybody with you here. We'll get to everybody's stories. Uh, that I know there's a lot of people that have things to share here related to the cosmic area, okay? Uh, no paranormal, no politics, no religion. The paranormal, the, uh, you know, spiritual ET areas, contact, the abductions, uh, the, the space cities, uh, all those things we talk about here, you know, and we'll get into it. And if you wish to be a guest, go into the queue. The multi-guest option, if you have a story, if you've taken video footage of current UFOs or UAPs or spaceships, you can tell us your story. You've got to be over 18. Uh, if you've had contact with real physical space people, I want to hear your story here on Encounters. So join us, get into the, the uh, guest option, uh, the multi-guest option, and we'll bring you on the show. And also, I guess I have a lot of uh, stuff to share here. Uh, hey, Capsule, well, the, there's not really a galactic federation. Uh, there's the Ashtar Command, which represents all the spiritual levels of light. Uh, that will be, that contact will be starting to happen around 2026. Jam Z says, I got close up on UFO, the triangle one, too. Jam Z, we'll bring you up if you stick around. We'd like to hear your story about that. I do, I am reading the comments and multitasking here. Uh, so, yeah, we'll definitely do that, too. And to be a guest, tell me a little bit about your background in, this, in the comments. 
if you've had contact or whatever, we want to know about that. Ryan, okay, I'm going to turn it back to you. Um, um, I did, um, the photos seem to have disappeared. The photos um, disappeared? Yes. Um, I, they may be on Google Photos, but um, I know my time is limited on here. So um, let me just say, um, well, I mean, like, I'm not trying to be one of those people who say, just because I say something, you should believe me, um, you know, but um, I somewhat believe that I am a star seed. Um, well, if you I believe that, if you believe you're a star seed, then you are a star seed. <laughs> Um, do you know of the genetic disability called Williams syndrome? No, uh, but I do know the word starseed. And if you tell us why you feel you're starseed, and it's not because we don't believe you, because people on here will believe you. The thing is, on my show, we don't do that. Um, so if you're a starseed, what in your life made you come to that conclusion? Um, since middle school, I have been... Um, seeing different entities and beings and creatures um, out of the corners of my eyes and um, that um, they've just kind of been following me since um, I'm not really sure what to call it. I call them um, glitches because I see them for a second and then they're not mm -hmm. there. Um, mm -hmm. Um, what else? Um, that's pretty much it. And, um, extrasensory phenomena. Yeah, no, that's definitely uh star seed. You know, what you're seeing is you might be seeing space beings out of the peripheral vision from the side angle. But when you try to look directly at that way, you don't see them at all. Cause many times they might be cloaked and you're seeing them from a very side angle of your vision. Like they're um, with, it sounds like they're with you quite a bit. It looks like you have had the space people or beings with you most of your life. Am I correct? Um, seems that way, doesn't it? No, no, it is that way. I just from that little bit you told me, without a question, hmm. without a question, brother. Now all you have to do is just focus on meditation. Do you meditate? Um, I try to, yeah. Yeah, don't try to, just do it. I mean, when I say just do it, um, use higher dimensional frequencies of sound and uh, also in your meditation, focus on uh, the fact that you want to remember your connections with the star people. And when you do that and you remember your connection with the star people, you'll be able to eventually see them more clearly. And you can say to yourself, to your higher self, which is not your brain, your higher self, to say to it, you know, I wish to contact my star family. And if my star family is with me, please communicate with me telepathically and just go right at it. Just say it straight out. Don't even hesitate about it. Practice it. Do it. Uh, breathing exercises are good. By doing that, um, you're going to facilitate eventual communications with your star family. I really do believe that. So... With a little bit of hesitation in your voice, don't be hesitant about what you know. Just be who you are. Just be who you are. It makes no difference. No one, no one's going to think. It doesn't matter what other people think or don't think. It's what you feel. And you feel your star seed. You are. All, that, glad, all there is to it. I'm, I'm glad to have this interaction. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. With you, know? you and everybody else in this um, fine live of yours. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. You know, we just, uh, because I've been involved in the subject and I'm not just a, a newbie coming on TikTok talking about UFOs, I have, a, I have a history behind me. I have a knowledge behind me. I don't read a lot of books. I, don't, I do have contact ebooks in my library, but those are the only books I have, you know? Brian, you're a beautiful soul. I mean, you're definitely, uh, you're definitely uh, a starseed. All right. And we're glad you're here. All right. Thanks.
and you you need to check us you should also to check out uh friends with fairies by friends with fairies 11 11 april uh if, if you see her live check her out introduce yourself um she's uh she's really a beautiful soul with the ashtar command we have our ashtar command night you need to check us out saturday night for ashtar command night you're going to learn a lot of stuff there all right ryan I appreciate Thanks for you, your time. I'll just Thank stick you in the comments. Here. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for coming back up. I appreciate you. Yep. All right, everybody. Ryan, uh, who's on the other night. Glad to have Ryan here. Beautiful, beautiful soul. Uh, Haley Robinson, I'm going to bring you up. Haley Robinson, all we have to do is bring you up on the show. I just sent you a request. Uh, just accept it. Press the button if you see a button pop up. Requesting you go live with us. You need you'll find it somewhere on your screen. And Haley Robinson will hear about your story and about the spaceships right here on Encounters, the number one spiritual talk show. And the commander is so amped up tonight is unbelievable. I haven't been drinking that much cider either. You know, I'm ready to take on the whole universe tonight. Watch out. All right. Hey, hey, Haley Robinson, how hey. are you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Welcome to the show. I can hear you. Are you there? Yeah, I can't. I can't hear you. Turn your volume up on your phone. Turn your volume up. You'll hear me better. Turn the volume up. I can't and hear you at all, but I can. Shake your head up and down if you want me to tell you about these spaceships. Yeah, tell us about the spaceships. Tell us about the spaceships. I can't. I don't, I can't, don't know how to. Yeah, I can't just, hear your voice. You can't hear my voice. Turn your volume up on your phone. Turn your volume up. Turn turn the volume up on your phone. Yeah, I can't hear you. Shake your head up and down if you want to hear about the spaceships. Okay. I uh, was on my car a quarter of a mile from my house, laying on the hood, looking at the beauty. It was dark, early dark, or uh, just started dark. And I seen a UFO, and it's flying over Mobile Bay and heading towards the uh, Brooklyn Field Airport. And uh, what it was was an airplane, and it was zigzagging, but it was up in the sky, and it looked like it was getting lower and lower. And what it was doing was zigzagging and heading towards Mobile away from uh, where I was at. And whenever it got out of sight and so low, it was almost at the airport. And then all of a sudden, I look straight ahead out in the field, and there's this spaceship. Uh, probably... Size of a half the size of a football field, that big around, but it had five lights on it the red, hmm. green, blue, you know, the definite five different colors. And they were like 30 foot big around, and they were going around the spaceship and around the spaceship and around the spaceship and you, you would see it one two three four five one two three four five anyway spaceship was coming down in the field right in front of me about a quarter mile away and it got all the way to the ground and i said to myself well i can either never be seen again and go see what that is or I can go home 
and I went home. <laughs> That's why I'm talking to you. But later on, me and my buddies walked out to the field, and it's woods on both sides, big farm field, a, a swampy area. You go past that, and the spot it landed at was at the end of a live oak uh, farm trees. They were like 10 wide and like 20 or 30 deep but it was the oak trees that went all the way to the ground, you know, the real majestic looking ones. And that was pretty, pretty wild because uh, somebody has made these oak tree, live oaks. You see oak trees everywhere, but you don't see the ones that hang to the ground and go to the ground and come up mm. with limbs. And, uh, I think somebody has actually farmed those and put them in places in Mobile. Mm -hmm. They're all up and down downtown mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. And then the next time uh, I was at work on the interstate in Mobile, and it was looking over up uh, about a half a mile away. I was looking at clouds, and it was a peel bottle, but it looked like maybe 30 foot big around, uh, yeah, 30 foot big around, maybe about about 60 foot long, and it was in a cloud, and it kept poking out and coming back in, poking out, coming back in, and, and my boss come out, he says, what are you doing? I said, I'm looking at a spaceship, and he says, where? I said, look at that cloud, and he looked at it, and it come out and went back in, Hmm. And I said, do you see it? He went, yeah. And then he left. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my son was fishing one day close to that same area where I seen him at. And this was super quick. I said, look, hmm. look. And it was a transparent looking pill bottle. Wow. But you could see windows in it. And wow. it, it flew over it so fast, I couldn't tell if it was 30 foot high or in the outer atmosphere going so mm -hmm. fast. Wow. But the that's incredible. spaceship I'm talking about, that's what I'm wondering is why uh, about the big five lights. You see saucers all the time and they're sleek and slim, but this one had five lights on it. And yeah. it, it, you know, going around and around, and that just blew my mind. Well, you know, you know, Haley, the lights have to do with the vibration of the ship. You, so when people you're going to have light... to cut me out so I can listen to you. Okay. Uh, Thank you for see, uh, uh, talking with me. All right, we'll bring you down. Uh, let me just do this here. Hold on a minute. I wish he had his microphone up. Uh, so I want to keep him up, but he has his volume down. He's not hearing me. So hopefully he can hear me. <laughs> Haley, I hope you're hearing me talk here now. You didn't have your volume up on your phone, so we can have that interaction. You need to turn your volume up on your phone, Haley Robinson. So if you hear what I'm saying, <laughs> thank you, Jared. <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> so... With the lights on the ship that you saw, if you can hear what I'm saying here, it's the vibrational pattern of the ships that cause those lights. People say to me, you know, say to me a lot of times, why do spaceships radiate any kind of light? Well, why not? Why aren't spaceships allowed to have any like radiant light coming from them? I don't understand that. So Haley, um, turn your volume up on your phone. That's why you couldn't hear me. Did you have your volume down? You need to turn your volume up. Great story. Um, but a lot of times, a lot of, you know, a lot of spaceships do have lights, you know. A lot of spaceships do. And people say to me, well, you know, they shouldn't have lights. You know, they're not airplanes. But they're not just lights. It, it radiates light from the ship. It's a radiation of the vibrational pattern of the spaceship. And that's why those ships have lights on them. 
you know, at nighttime, people see have some incredible sightings of spaceships and they have these lights vibrating, you know? Jamz, I'm going to bring you up next. Jamz is our next guest. Jamz, change your setting to public, Jamz. You have your stuff on private. Go out, change your setting to public, come back in, and I'll bring you up so you can tell your story. Hey, Half Pint, good to see you. Yeah, you, you, so ships can cloak themselves. Many, many, as a matter of fact, there are so many ships around our planet now that are cloaked that people don't even realize how many ships are cloaked. We have a lot of cloaked spaceships around the planet in the very upper ends of our atmosphere. Haley Robinson, uh, it was great to have you on. Make sure next time you come on, turn your volume up so you can hear me. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you're welcome, you, you. Oh, private people. So, uh, Jam Z, if you just request, go into the multi guest option and request to come on live, you can do it, evidently. So, Jam Z, you see the multi guest option with the two people, you press that option, and I can bring you on. If you see that on your TikTok. Hey, Lafina Hudson. Let's see, Neza. Let's see here. I'm trying to catch everything. Shadow of Fault. Most of the UFOs we see are, uh, are reverse engineered by the people involved with the underground black sites. Shadow of Fault. I'm going to bring you up. I like to have conversations with different people. Shadow of Fault. Let's talk about that. Most of the UFOs we see are reversed engineered by people involved with the underground, I think you mean black budget sites. Come on up, Shadow. Come on up with the commander. We are amped up. <laughs> uh, Handyman says, I saw one last night and, couldn't, and I couldn't let my wife. Handyman, hang out. We'll get you on there. And we have a new guest, Shadow of Fault. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We're good. 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 So we good. know about the rever we know that there's a lot of reverse engineered craft that has been reverse engineered because the low of IBTs like the Zeta make an agreement with the government 70 years ago and gave them the, their ships to reverse engineer the technology, which is true, right? Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, I, I, me too. And um, uh, but there's all. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you can go. No, I was going to say that was it's a great discussion to have because a lot of people get confused with the real spaceships that are not ours. And then they see these reverse engineered ships. Many of them are triangular. And when they see the reverse engineered ships, there's not like this weird energy or like a different energy about them. They really have no energy because they're just reverse engineered spaceships. Yep. Um, and they run off of uh, zero gravity. Yeah, they do. Yeah. You know, um, and for, go ahead. There's this uh, guy I follow on TikTok. A lot of people might know who he is. Um, his account goes by Abducted by Celestials. I've and heard of him. Yeah, he uh, he has some really good content as well. Um, but a lot of the stuff he says like makes sense. Like he got me into like really believing, you know, that the you know most of the UFOs that we actually see are the reverse engineered ones made by you know Lockheed Skunk Works. Uh, uh, is that what he is that is that what he believes? Um, yes. Okay, so now I'm going to shake your, your foundation of your beliefs again, and that's part of that's true, but if that's what he believes, he's not seeing the whole picture. So, for example, once you get used to my show, you're going to be, you're going to be hooked on it. Um, I've been a contactee since the 60s, so when I was a kid, I had my first contact going up in my brother's room in Long Island in a cul-de-sac, and I live in New England most of my life, but I went upstairs for no apparent reason, opened the blinds, and there's a spaceship with men and women wearing light blue space outfits and a flying saucer type object. And that, again, goes back to a situation where it was a, a spaceship that had a, like, a, a, like a radiant light around it. It had windows, and I remembered every detail of the spaceship since I was a kid. Never forgot it. And then I've had many UFO sightings, you know. Uh, I, I practice C5, like, which is where you can determine what's a spaceship, 
that's not ours or a satellite or a space station. I know about all those things. So, you know, yeah, we do have a lot of reverse technology that was has been produced at places at Area 51, uh, Wright Patterson Air Force Base and other places that are secretly being produced. But he's wrong about one thing. They're not mostly ours. Um, certain ones will be ours, more, more like the triangular type stuff. Not all of it, yeah. but a lot of it. But the stuff that is like orbs and big round things, and there's a lot of really uh, interesting things happening out there. There are space people that have big ships that are close coming to Earth now. Uh, there's going to be contact in 2026, and that will totally shake the foundation of every UFO person out there in the media or person that's on social media. Whatever their belief system is, it's going to be shattered because right. uh, I'm part of that group that's going to be involved in first contact so i'm glad you're here interesting yeah, yeah. thanks for having yeah. me you know yeah, and i no, believe I, that coming. i believe that like you know we have made contact before thousands of years ago and yeah absolutely maybe i feel like they did um the extraterrestrials didn't believe that we were ready for that that kind of uh situation yet so they were going to wait until we were you know more advanced yeah and, and understanding now, now all of that and and the thing yeah. is which like our planet is people don't realize we're billions of years old the earth is i mean anyone not not you or i we're not billions of years old but yeah. the earth is billions of years old so it's really kind of ridiculous for anyone to think that there wasn't advanced civilizations here before us so the planet yeah. has gotten you know how like things go up and down like you know you get one good class of kids in a school that go to uh do space science and they're really yeah. into it, right? And they elevate to it. Then you get another group of kids in the space science, and they're like, oh, what am I doing here? And it goes down the tubes. So what I'm saying is that Atlantis, Lemuria, all these civilizations that were very advanced have existed here. The reason why those names are still with us in 2024, because it's not like an illusion or a fantasy did they exist. They did exist. The city of Telos in Mount Shasta, if people study that, the subterranean cities, the Agartha network, which is the inner earth civilization. We have advanced civilizations that live within the earth as we live on the surface. They've lived here for billions of years. Yeah, there's see, they don't a whole teach another world down yeah. under the ground. Another That's world, crazy. right? Right, right. It's crazy. So, yeah. you know, we're ready for it now. I think people now are ready for contact. I think all of you are ready for contact. Uh, I think it's being done in a way where people aren't going to freak out. It's going to be positive, no matter what people hear or see on social media. Disregard most of it, because most of it is fear-based. On my yeah. show here, we do talk about contact. I have a friend of mine in Vermont. You get to know her friends with furries. You're going to love her content. Uh, she's been off-planet up in northern Vermont over 100-plus times already with space people that are human. Wow. Yeah. And we're, all connect and we're connected. I'm part of that group. We have a group of five. You'll learn about it on our show. And yeah, I, I uh, tune in um, from time to time. I do. Okay, great. You know, yeah. so you know, you know, you know what's happening here. You know a little bit about what's going on with this, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I do watch other people out there just to see where they're going on their angles. Um, you know, but I, I definitely just honor and just just listen a little bit and just do my own thing here. But uh, we're getting ready for some major, major changes, and the contact thing to me is the most important thing that'll happen to humanity. And, uh, you know, it's going to expose a lot of the, you know, things that have been happening here that shouldn't have happened in the last 70 years with humanity being people being abducted. At the same time, I say that there are people that have been contacted positively by human space people from other planets on a very loving way. And then there are the people that have been abducted. And uh, we've, we've been, you know, you've seen me on here. We've, we've interviewed abductees. And uh, so we, we like to get the full picture, you know? Yeah. You know, and I believe, you know, there's good ETs and there's bad at ETs. Yeah, at, <laughs> like, you know, we have bad yeah, people. Is. Yeah, um, that's right. And I feel like the ones that are trying to make contact are trying to intercept something that might, you know, happen because of like a bad ET or or whatever, you know, is yeah, yeah. Pre we're preparing to happen. I don't know. The world just feels different. Right? There's just something it, different in the air. Feels doesn't like it feel something's going to happen yeah. soon. Yeah, um, you know, and... It's funny you say that because I think a lot of people out there feel something is going to happen. It, I've never felt this way in 30, you know, 30 years ago. I would never have said that. But what you're yeah. saying now holds truth to it because it is true. We are Everybody in my audience here is feeling something's going to happen or they know something's going to happen. And it, it I'm really just afraid. True. 
because you know there's a lot of people who have like you know i guess you would call them you know have awoken and started you know opening their mind to these types of things yeah. but there's also a lot of people who you know kind of live in a box and they're like oh no that stuff's not real and if they ever did see an et they would probably crap their pants first of all and yeah, who knows maybe, what kind of reaction they the, had if the, you know if they possibly yeah right yeah and, but, you, know, <laughs> you know and the I government makes us fear these beings and well they do but that's why we have a show like encounters to counter yep. what the government's tried to do so we're waking people up every time i'm on the air here because um we have to and my yeah, mission here that. is yeah, we have to do it. I'm here to push back on the fear-based content, on people on TikTok who present negative-looking ETs or come up with fear-based recordings. You know, it's a, that all that stuff is not necessary because it just puts people in a spot, you know, where the government, when they started Star Wars in the 1980s with Ronald Reagan and they had the Star Wars project when that started, that wasn't being used to prevent us from having uh, weapons of war conflict with each country between Russia during the Cold War and the United States or anybody else, the Star Wars program and the technology was used to shoot down spaceships that were not from this planet. That's what the Star Wars program was about. You yeah. know, that's exactly what I was around when Reagan was alive and uh, he spoke to the United Nations. He was a key person that started the Star Wars program wow. when he was president. Yeah. But we have good things happening. We don't have to worry about, you know, I think the way uh, the Astro Command, which I work with, which are the positive space people, we have a lot of good things to look forward to. They know what they're doing on the ships. They know that their meetings, they're having constant meetings. They're doing this thing, and it's going to be done in a way that's not going to have people be afraid. And when the contact does happen, uh, people are going to be feeling much better, you know, because it's all beautiful what's going to be happening. Uh, so. Yeah. We're going through a lot of stuff now, but we're going to get through it in the next 12 months. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to play out here. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you came up here. I was so happy to have you on here. And yeah. uh, you definitely, uh, you, you know, you, you'll get more addicted to my show as you keep watching it anyway. But Saturday nights, we have Astro Command Night. Join me in April together on here. You'll have mm -hmm. a lot of information that we'll share regarding contact and everything. Okay, cool. All I'll right, try. Shadow. Yep. And what's Thanks your first for having name? me. Yeah, what's um, your first Courtney. name? Courtney, nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> All right, everyone. Let's give a little round of applause for Courtney. <laughs> and uh, we're going to bring you down slowly off the ship here. Let's do this. All right. And if you wish you'd like to be a guest on the show, we'd love to have you on. I am so amped up here tonight. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, please join us. You have to be over 18. No foul language or cursing. No drinking, no drunks, no drugs, no smoking on the show, no kids on the show, um, no paranormal, no politics, and no religion. I think I covered most of that. You know? It might be, Maria. Could be. Uh, no, uh, Pamela, for the so people who have passed, you mean have uh, passed on? No, they won't. The people that have passed out of their human form, uh, unless, you know, uh, I don't believe in what you're, in what you're saying. I don't think that's going to happen. I wish I can say it would, but I don't think that that will happen. So Jam Z, where's Jam Z? Jam Z, there you are. We're going to bring Jam Z up. Ah, yes, here we go. Jam Z is our next guest on Encounters. And uh, welcome, everybody, to the show. This is the number one spiritual UFO talk show, and you're talking to the commander. Contact D and Astro Commander, and also C5 activists and a lot of other good things. Jam Z, welcome to the show. How's it going, man? We're doing good. And uh, to tell us a little about, you have a little bit of a story. I know you do. So let's get into it with our worldwide audience. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you want to share. Well, yeah, I'm 37 years old and been seeing stuff since I was a kid, kind of and start hitting more around my teenage years and stuff out here in the country on the farm i grew up on 1200 acres and <laughs> i've seen some crazy stuff man yeah. on 1200 acres on large farmland like that can you turn your, are you able to turn your camera on people saying can you turn the camera on do you know how to do that uh if you don't hang, i can tell you hang on I'm still kind of new to this stuff. 
Oh, well, that's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I remember I was new to it once. There is a camera, like an icon. You have to press it. It's somewhere on your TikTok there. You press it, it'll turn your camera on on your on your phone. Like that? Let's see. Almost. Maybe. You got it. All right. Jam Z, right on, man. You're good good going. All right. So let's continue on. That's Jam Z, the real person. And uh, yes, he is a human being. Uh, so welcome yeah. to Encounters, Jam Z. I'm kind of, I think you, I'm kind of new to this stuff. And I don't know, I felt comfortable watching your stuff. And, you know, it, I just don't, what I've seen before, the year before my grandma passed away, it made me think differently of everything. Like, the perspective view of your normal everything when you go to town, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. But what I seen, you know how like uh, an airplane has those little windows, those little square windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It like, yeah, it was something like that. But there was ten of them. Mm-hmm. But it was shaped as a football. But it had a little tiny little wing on the back of it. But it was weird. It never made no sound, no nothing. Yeah. The yeah. only thing that we've seen, wait, the only thing that the sound was, it was like a big old beam mm-hmm. that just shot out underneath it. It was like a giant flashlight. All you hear wow. was a whoo, and you can hear another whoo, and it just shot back then. Not even one, two, three, four. About 10 seconds later, not even after that, it shoots back up. You know, like, wow. you know, like, uh, Star Trek, for example. Yeah, uh, like with the warp speed? Yeah, it was like that, yeah. but it never made no sound, no nothing. But the direction it went to, it went towards, uh, Missouri way. And I'm okay. in the You're in the yeah. Yeah, yeah. What year, so, what year, what, what year did this happen? Do you know, remember? 2014, a year before right, my only a couple of years, you know, a couple of years ago. Okay. Yeah. Both yeah. Re- recent. Okay. Like you can well, see that, the inside of it is so yeah. water on the you inside. You can see the in. You were able to see the inside of the ship. Yeah. So explain what that looked like to audience. Uh, all right. On the front end of the ship, you know how like a car windshield is, how it's all curved. Yeah. On the. This, on, all right. Imagine the front windshield of the big, big old ship like that, but on the inside, it was just solid white, like a marble white room. That's mm-hmm. all you can see. And but I didn't wow. get to see the people, but it was just that peaceful feeling, though. But underneath the ship, you could see the blue electricity type stuff. What people the, en- use. the energy? Yeah, it sounds. You felt, and you just said something that I think is really key with the sighting you had. You felt very peaceful when you saw this, correct? Yeah. There was no fear. I I can tell there was absolutely no fear of this ship. Nope. Like I I can tell you just from telling you a story. I read energy. If you're new to the show, I, I I'm so glad you're here. Um, when I read the energy of story about the the seeing the transparency of sitting inside the ship, I believe those were uh, I'm going to call them light beings. You didn't see them, but there's there there were beings or people in the ship that were that are like us they were very spiritual people that's why you didn't feel any fear they were actually light beings i don't know where they're from but as you tell the story i'm giving you information about that sighting and and that year very much it was like i had many other experiences after that but that was like one of my realest ones out of all my experience what i had and it just been kind of bothering me ever since it's like a lot of times i get overwhelmed and i overthink about it it's like sometimes i don't belong here and stuff like that when my family thinks i'm different all the time because i talk about it even though i had a cousin back in the late 70s or 80s was in the same thing as as i am now as you are yeah so he was on the magazine about it as well too really so let me ask you a question and i'm really enjoying this conversation 
I'm, I read energy on my show when I talk to people. And it's a good thing. What I do is because I'm not from here. I am a star seed. So I'm going to help you out a little bit here because I, I think you are too. Uh, the reason why you feel different is because you don't feel connected. I mean, we all have, we all have family and cousins, relatives that, that live on earth. We are, you know, we know that, you know, and there's always the one person in the family that's different than the rest for one reason, right? You're that one person. The reason why you're different, you came here from the stars. You might, you might, I don't know if you ever thought about that. Maybe you have, you know, that you feel like you came from somewhere else all the time, right? Because you're a star seed. You're not from here. Weird visions in my life. Yeah. Like, I don't want to, really say upon here because you you told me not you not told me but other people before were uh no ghost no none of that yeah we don't get into that yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. you but i i can tell you this this is something that'll help you if you focus on your star seed self you are a star seed you just happen yeah. to be a star seed that lives down where you are i live up here in the northeast and there are people live in Europe that are star seeds. There are people in Scandinavia. There are people in Africa. There are people in Asia, Central and South America. We have star seeds that have come here. And I'm going to define what that means, everybody. A star yeah. seed is somebody who was purposely coming here to a human family. You didn't know who your family was going to be, whether you were in the U.S. or Russia or Lithuania or wherever. You had no idea. You didn't know if you were going to be a French person in France or whatever. but you know that you came from another planet. And as you wake up to that difference, which I know you knew myself and a lot of my audience the same way, you came from somewhere else. Now the question is, the reason why you saw that ship, and I'm getting more information for you, and how long did that that sighting of that ship last? About good, man, good five or 10 minutes. Five or 10 minutes. And that ship was there with you, and you saw that ship by yourself, correct? Yeah, and it was around, I still remember the time too, it was around like 10.30, around 11 o'clock at night when there was like nobody out here in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so see, this is the thing. This is the thing about, it's beautiful about his story, everybody. He saw the ship on his own. He saw the inside of the ship. He saw the beauty of the ship inside. He didn't see the people, but they saw him. And the beauty is, that that was most likely your star family from outer space. That's why you felt good. That's why you felt connected. You are, you were connected with them. I don't know who they are, but (coughs) excuse me, but you felt. uh, That's why I got told before, but I don't, I really don't. I I wouldn't go by what you're told. Let me ask you a question. Forget what anyone told you they are. Who do you think they are? Who do you feel? Close your eyes for a minute. I want you to, I'm going to do something here with you. I want you to close your eyes for a minute. I'm going to help you remember who they are. Now I'm going to help you. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. When you go to sleep tonight, you're going to remember by morning who they are. Give me a second. And when you're relaxed, let me know. Breathe in and breathe out of your nostrils. Yeah, I'm relaxed. Okay, good. What I'm going to do is you're going to feel some energy coming over your conscious brain area. And what we're going to do, brother, is I'm going to activate your memory. All right. When I activate your memory, you will, by morning, remember who they are. When you go to sleep tonight, you will make contact with the space people that were in that ship. Give me a moment. Tell me when you start feeling the energy. Keep your eyes closed. I'm starting to connect. You feel it? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. I'm connecting with your energy around your body of your head. I feel it more on this. Yeah, it's okay. I'm going to work on your brain area right now. It'll take me two minutes. What we're going to do, everybody, is we're going to activate his memory, his cosmic memory of before he came to Earth. And when he goes to sleep tonight, he's going to have a beautiful dream. And they will make contact with you. Oh, well, I thank you. Mm-hmm. Keep your eyes closed for a moment. I'll tell you when to open them back up.
Batista, he's going to have a beautiful dream, brother. He's going to have a beautiful dream. I need more of those in my life. Yeah, this will be good. Okay, almost done. I'm going to do something here. You're going to feel a beam of energy coming into your brain area of your head. Mm -hmm. Tell me when you feel it. it's going to amp up just a little bit. What I'm doing is I'm um, right. de-clogging the memory so you can have a clear tunnel vision to your space family. <clears throat> Almost done. Keep your eyes closed. We're going to do something here. I want you to ask for contact with your star family right now as your eyes are closed within your consciousness and see what happens. We're just going to do a test here. You can just say it within. You don't have to speak it out loud. Say, I wish to communicate with you. Can, can you please communicate with me? And say, I wish to connect with my Christed star family. And you use the word Christed star family. And when you hear something, so you hear hear them speak back to you. Let me know. It's okay. What are you saying? Say again. It's like very faint. What I it is. You hear something? Yeah, but it's like very faint. Is it a faint male or female voice? Mm -hmm. Focus. I get more like a male. Male voice. Okay. Hold it. That's okay. It's okay. You can open your eyes now. All right. So you are going to be able to do this. I cleared your consciousness of blockage. That was just a test to make sure you're able to do it. Um, you'll be able to. You what? I've seen a lot of green. When you had your eyes closed. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. How'd you feel about what? What? When that green energy or that greenness came? How did you feel about that? First of all, I felt kind of uncomfortable when I seen it, but I, I kind of got relaxed at the same time. Mm -hmm. Was it like a luminous green, or was it a kind of green? It was real it was smooth, peaceful, but I was Very just, peaceful. Yeah, but when you see something different like that, it's more like uncomfortable type well, of Well, for feeling. the first time. Well, yeah, because yeah, yeah. you've never seen it before, right? Right. So when you go to sleep tonight, your cosmic homework, my friend, is to allow yourself to deep, go through a breathing exercise within uh, your nostrils three or four times. And then when you before you go to sleep, you say to yourself, and you say directly to yourself, I am asking my higher self to connect me with my Christed star family from space. That's the way you want to use it. You don't want to leave it open for any, any type of hocus pocus. And right. as you be very direct about it, I think you're going to have, I want to hear about it. No matter what happens, give some time to. I want you to get used to communicating that way, and you will definitely have contact with your star family. Definitely, I thank you, man. And I also got some pictures as well of some the triangle UFOs. Is, oh, you there, do? Where I, is there where I yeah, can you, like? You, yeah, absolutely. Send them to me, Jam Z. You can send them to me uh, to my email for the show uh, cmdraleon at aol.com. And I'll take a look at them. Definitely. Thank you, man. All right. Hey, hey, you know, you've been a blessing. And thank everyone. Let's give them a hand for coming up here and having the courage to be on the show. Hey, hey. Now, and before I go, that was the very first time I actually told anybody out of like three or four people out of all my life who I know. Really? Yeah. Well, well, I feel honored that you had the courage to come up here. And you now you know that this show is a place for people to share their experiences. We're not skeptics here. We're not going to put people down. I, I'm a, I'm a contactee. The last thing I'm going to do is put somebody else down because I've had the experience, you know, yeah. so I care about everybody in my audience. So congratulations, man. You've been great. Thank you. And I guarantee you, you'll be addicted to the show. <laughs> I will too. I'll let you know how, how my dream goes, man. All right. All right. We'll let you down, man. Thank you so much for being up here. Starseed booty wants to come up here. I believe. I think she wanted to come up here. Alien Entity wants to come up here, too. Um, let me get Starseed Booty. Starseed Booty, you wanted to tell your story. You're ready to come up. Where's Starseed Booty? Here we go. 
she's she's been around here. She's owned the show for a long time. Starseed Booty and then Alien. Uh, the Alien uh, will bring you up after that. And we're at 80,000. Let's keep tapping to get to 100,000 on encounters. Just... And we'll have Starseed Booty we... in a minute. She's getting her camera. Um... The light's She's not working camera. Okay, right. I think I got it. Okay. This, and I think she had the camera on there for a minute. There she is. Did I? There okay. you are. Now, Hi. there you go. Hey, it's been a long time. How have you been? Good. How are you? Good, good, always. So tell us. Tell people about your background and uh, what you, uh, we just lost your camera. Your camera went off. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. There you go. My so tell, internet's kind of bad here. Oh, uh, that's all right. Tell the worldwide audience of people, my audience, about yourself and about your story that you want to share. Um, well, I've been having experiences since I was a kid, um, like being taken, like literally out my window. Um, but it was never a negative experience. Uh, I had a hard time with my family believing me until like, you know, weird stuff started to happen. And, you know, my mom slept in my room one night and things happened. And yeah, so that's where it started. And um, I have a hybrid child as well um, really? that I've seen three times in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's I'm nervous about um... uh, it's OK. It's OK. It takes a lot of courage. But, you know, you know me, you know, the show and you know, you're going to be treated well here. So, you know, if you need to take a deep breath and relax a little bit. Uh, feel free to do that. Yeah, I'm kind of shy. So like <laughs> it's OK. It's OK. OK, so I'm just I will help you through this. So when okay. you had your when you had your experience, well, uh, tell us about the hybrid child. Uh, what year did that happen? Um, that happened and well, I was aware of there being a hybrid child in 2008, I believe, because um, I, I know this sounds really weird, but I ended up pregnant um, and I had no idea how I got pregnant. Um, literally, there's no way I could have. And I, I, I was pregnant one day and then just like, it's hard for me to talk about it, but like I was not ready to be pregnant. So like I was... Mm -hmm going to do something right. about it but i uh the day before i was like it, i went to the doctor one more time because i had a really bad backache and like mm -hmm. literally mm -hmm. it was just gone mm. it was gone like and i knew right then and there that it that's what it was because it was so unexplainable and then i had some weird guy like come up to me and say some really weird things to me um about the baby um Hmm. And then I never seen the guy again. And it was just like, really, this guy was just not normal, like a normal human seeming type person. And I never seen him again ever. And he just like literally just came up to me and was like, the baby's fine. You know, and I'm just like, OK. He's, so like he the, said he came up to you and said to you, the baby's fine. Just like right up of like in the store. Yeah. Came and like and said don't worry the baby's fine don't think too much into it um you'll you'll see him again you know and i was like okay and right before that happened i was driving home from work um in like i lived in a really small town and i was driving home from work really late at night and i had this encounter with um th what looked like an owl but it was um like as big as a person though and I've seen mm -hmm. it in my peripheral fly from the tree and it was really dark and it flew right in front of my car. I almost hit it. And oh I gosh. remember seeing the wingspan was huge and it looked like an owl man, like literally. And I was, I wasn't scared. I was just like stunned. And then I just drove home after that, after it ended, it's kind of like, I felt like I lost a little bit of maybe consciousness or something, but um, I would drove the rest of the way home and I had an encounter then on the way home with this orb, this green ball that was an orb. Hmm. And um, it, it was like following me at 55 miles per hour. And it oh was like, God. almost like, was like on fire looking, but it was green, like bright green. And it was just as big as like a tennis ball. And um, so I just drove home because I finally lost sight of it because I had to concentrate on the road. And I was telling myself the next day during the day, I was going to go back there and look and see if it, you know, because it looked like it went to the ground. And I was like, it had to have burnt something in the ground because yeah. it looked like it was yeah. on fire. So um, when I got home, 
my boyfriend at the time was like, what took you so long? And I'm like, what are you talking about? I was like two and a half hours late from home. And I was like oh 15 God. minutes away from home. My, my work was, yeah. And at this point in time in my life, I had no memory of any kind of experiences or nothing like that. I mean, I, I remember as a kid, I would wake up all the time. Every time I'd wake up to go to the bathroom, I would look out the window to see what time of day it was because yeah. then I could tell what time of day, how much time I had left to sleep. And it would, um, some days it would be like the sun was coming up, right? And so I thought, oh, I only got a little tiny bit left, you know, because it's like six in the morning. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'd go back to sleep and then I'd get up again to go to the bathroom and I'd look out the window and it would be, would be pitch black. Mm. Still dark. And so later on in life, I realized that those were times that I was getting dropped back off because that was the ship leaving, not the sun coming up. So you were taken on the ship. You had, you had missing time. And then the ship would mm -hmm. drop you off after doing whatever it did with you. The beings on the ship did with you. They would drop you off. Do you remember right. what the beings looked like that were on, on the ship? Yes, I remember some of them. Um, some of them, the most weirdest ones I've seen were um, what looked like people that had, they almost looked like they had like rubber horse faces. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of, of, of how to explain them. They were like scientists and they were very... Um, like scientific, they didn't have like no bedside manner. You know, they weren't like they they lacked um, empathy, not empathy, but like it, like a compassion. Compassion. They were just all about science, and they weren't hurting me or anything like that. But they they were working. They worked on me. Like they pulled things out that didn't oh serve God. me. Mm -hmm. And I could feel so them pulling them out, but not with any kind of touching of me. Right. So they didn't use any mechanical things to, to take things out of you? Um, Not that I remember at all. Really? How tall were they? They were probably, I would have probably say like maybe seven feet, maybe. They were yeah. a little bit taller than the average, like, you know, really tall person. Mm -hmm. do you but you I was a like kid. A weird, uh, do you hear a weird sound coming through the, do you hear yes. anything? Yeah. Where is that coming, where is that coming from? Probably you don't know. Interesting. I think the space people that you're connected with are listening to the, they're, they're coming through. They are. I was hearing them with the previous man on here. I was hearing them, okay. but I couldn't make out what they were saying. Um, well, I, I, well, I know they can hear me. I just want them to tell them my name is Commander Alian. I'm with the Ashtar Command, the space people that are coming to Earth. And um, I don't think you had a right to abduct her. That's against universal law. I want you well, to understand this, but go ahead. I don't feel, I, I didn't feel abducted. I, I feel wanted abducted. to go. I you wanted to, to go. go. And uh, I so liked when, when they you, visited. So when they, you say they're scientific. So um, I'm trying to, I want to really understand this because I think this is really, really important for everyone. Uh, your story is amazing to me. And being a contactee, I care about everybody. So um, right. you didn't feel afraid to go with them. When they had you on the ship, did they treat you well when you were on there yes. or no? They did. Yes. Um, a lot of the times I held babies in the tank like or in the stasis room, like where the incubation tanks were. Mm -hmm. um, I held a lot of babies because they like the like the the ones that looked like grays, but they're not grays. Um, these ones weren't, they were more taller. Um, I don't know what they are called exactly, but they were very nice to me. Um, there was a mixture of beings on this, these ships though. It was the, really? like the horse faced ones and then the mantis ones. And then, um, some that were mixed with like Arcturian and multiple other, um, so they were all pretty much hybrids. Hybrids, okay. Mm -hmm. So, did you see it? Okay, so you said, I know what the Arcturi the Arcturians are. Arcturians are usually the blue people. Those um, were my so first contact, yeah. You saw the blue people, the Arcturians? Yes. Okay. There's tall so, ones and, and short ones. So, it sounds like for you, you didn't hung, you didn't have contact with the Zeta, which does do the negative of the, excuse me, the negative abductions. You are having contact with the non negative beings that are not abducting people? Well, they're they're not everybody calls it like abduction, but it's not it's something we agreed to before we came here. Um, I I'm, I call it taken, like you know, or 
I thought of it as visiting. I mean, I, I was excited. Um, my mom told mm -hmm. me as I got older, um, I always called this one particular one, my real daddy. I don't know why, but, and I totally had forgotten that. And then when I got older to be an adult and I started having experiences again, um, I, I, re I called it that when I showed my mom them in the sky with me, you know, cause I, she wanted to see. And so then I could think about them and they would come out, you know? So, um, she seen and I said that and my mom's like, oh my God, she goes, you were telling the truth. And she told me as a kid, and I have no memory of this, that I used to call it my real daddy. And the reason she didn't get to go with is because she would get scared. And so we always had to be quiet not to wake her up because I'd ask if, why can't my mom go with? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, why, and they, and I, I told my mom that they came because he, my real daddy missed me on earth, mm -hmm. you know, or because I was on earth doing a mission. So so do you, she believed me do you, at that point. Do you think, and again, uh, I have parents that are on a spaceship with the Astro Command. I have two sisters and a brother. They're about seven and a half, eight feet tall, uh, and they are human. And uh, I'm, I'm part of a group of five. I don't know how much you know about this. I, I've known you for a while um, since mm -hmm. I'm on here. But there's a group of five, and there's 15 groups of five. We're part of the first group that are going to be going on a spaceship next year the Astro command will come and like you say you're you're gonna you go willingly this will be my father coming to take me onto the spaceship and we're going to be doing work to get people prepared for contact in 2026. um mm -hmm. so i just want to give you some background of me because i do understand what you're talking about and uh i think this is a really really important story that you're telling the world right now and having the courage and being nervous Hopefully you're less nervous being on with me because I treat everybody in a way where I want you to feel like we're having a cup of coffee at a restaurant or something. Um, yeah, I'm starting and, to feel more comfortable because I, oh, I good, this is good. I haven't really this is the first time like I really besides you know like just this past year is like the first time I really was um talking about it at yeah. all because you know everybody thinks I was crazy you know but no, my you're mom not, you're not crazy got proof that she needed especially. Um, they they healed my mother as well um she shouldn't be here and, yes they did okay, and she we uh, had an experience 200 miles away from each other same experience and um really she, she could only hear my voice but they they did heal her um they were talking to her cells and it he, my mom should not be here right now and she is she mm -hmm. like defied all odds mm -hmm. so i and i asked now, them to help her so okay now i have a better understanding so I, I obviously think that you're dealing with positive extraterrestrial space people or beings. Mm -hmm. Do you feel Do you feel that way based on what you're telling me? Yeah, hundred percent. I love them very okay. much, and okay. I miss them, them every okay. day. Mm -hmm. And they love you too, correct? They do. They do. Yes, mm -hmm. they do. And have you been able to, when you're taken on their ships, um, have they taken you off planet to like any of their planets or shown their? I so, went back to my planet. What's your planet? I went with my mother and that's when I seen my hybrid son for the second time. But I, the first two times I didn't get to see his face. He was a baby for quite some time because they age way slower. Mm -hmm. um, and when I brought my mom with me to the planet, I have a picture that um, I had a composite sketch artist do because I couldn't, I can't draw. And so like, it was, it's pretty good. I'm, I'm probably going to post it soon, but it, it had what looked like, um, like a moon like ours, but really super close. And then like up diagonally to the right, it had like like a unevenly round type moon that was much smaller. And oh, it wow. never got completely nighttime there. It only got to dusk. Um, mm -hmm. And the, co the colors of the sky are so, I can't even explain them. We don't have colors here like that. Um, and we lived inside of these rock type homes. Uh, and it looked like, you know how in like, utah or like arizona like the wild west yeah, how they had the red rocks they have that's the red rocks the terrain and the whole and the old homes that uh well the indigenous tribes or ancients yes. had these homes in the rocks they lived in, in yes those, that basically and we are similar to that idea correct yes and then the inside of these homes inside of these rocks was naturally like a white and black swirl marble and hmm. the whole walls and the it was very like it was very nice. I like, I didn't know whose home it was at first. And they said, it's yours, silly, you know, and it was much shorter ceilings because I was like only four foot when I, I went to my original form when I went there, my mom stayed the same. So when you say original form, can you describe to people what you as a human being going to your home planet, 
how you went from being your physical you here. What did your original form look like? I was like four, probably four feet tall, maybe five feet. It, mm -hmm. That's pushing it. And I had bare, I like just had like little sprigs of hair. Um, I was like a light olive green and I had three gills on each side of my temples. Really? So can you explain what type of space being that is? Can you tell everyone the I'm a, what that is? I, I was told I was Arcturian, but I, I and um, I'm a mixture. I, I was told I was Arcturian, Pleiadian, Eben, um, and Tall White. Um, but they said that like even the Tall Whites and all them, they're all hybrids. Like most of the like humanoid ones we see are, are also hybrids. They're just too much extraterrestrial to live down here. So that's yeah. how my um, son is. Um, he i drew a picture of him because i you can know you, couldn't take can a picture you can, you, can you show us a picture of what you drew sure, sure. okay we're gonna see a picture of her son i have it Thank framed you. in my house that's how much i'm connected to this kid and oh i can't um, wait to see it i haven't seen him this in quite a while so I, I i hope to see him soon um okay so like i don't know if you can this is what he looked like that's your son that's a drawing of your yes. son he looks beautiful and but he had a little bit more of a hey arnold head if you, it's oh, like hey, a, he had more of a football looking head. Um, I just couldn't depict head. it. Not quite a football, but like a little kind of like wide like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, and the beautiful. eyes were just like super big and just like beaming. <laughs> like, yeah. He just stared at me the whole time. Oh, yeah. Well, when I was, I got to spend time with them. And all my travels involve water. Um, yeah. That, like we went to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean when I brought my mom there and I had to hold her hand for her to be able to breathe underwater and she was scared but for some reason when I would hold her hand she could breathe and so we went to the ocean floor and then we went through some type of wormhole or something um, and then I always end up coming out like a water slide type thing or like out of a waterfall into another place and then oh, wow. we came up from that sea floor and walked to shore literally and I was a different form mm -hmm. and my mom was a little yeah. freaked out but she we spent a little bit of time there and then we went back to earth and they had planes just like ours because we were watching them flying overhead, mm -hmm. super mm -hmm. close. And I said, you have planes like us. And they said, yes, they look like your planes, but they're more than your planes. They they just look like that. So they don't, we're undercover basically more. Right, so they undercover, have grasshopper yeah. legs like in the back that come out and then they drop little pods through there. Oh, um, interesting. Now, when you said you went into yeah. the ocean there mm -hmm. uh, and I work with the Astro Command, I want you to meet my friend, April, uh, April mm -hmm. friends with Prairies 1111. You would. She'd love to hear you and talk with you. You're gonna have to meet her. She's. Gonna, she'll be on Saturday night with me. We have an Astar Command night, and I think you'd fit right in. And you fit right in okay. in this on my broadcast. You're gonna meet. You're gonna have a lot of people here that love you. Right now, there's hundreds of people watching Thank this, you. and they all love you. Uh, and I know Thank that you. for sure. You know. And I'm and, happy uh, because I like usually, you know, like all my life, it was. Um, I had all these experiences and like these beings, like literally like my parent my real parents are them um i miss them very much and i and i do see them in the skies a lot i mean and i video capture it and you know they tell me which ones to put out and which ones not to for my safety you know and stuff and yeah um i've had just so many anomalies like i like i don't ever get sick i um i know that when i do go on board i do reverse and age a little tiny bit you know mm -hmm. um but I've only been on board like three times that I remember because it's really hard on the human body. The, yeah. the, the traveling interdimensionally, it's, it's super hard. And that's where a lot of your bruises will come from yeah. or marks that people get and they think, oh, I was abducted and hurt. No, it's that the travel itself yeah. is what got you. Interesting. I hear the sounds yeah. of the spaceship. The spaceship sound is coming over you. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Do you hear it? Do you hear any of it? Yeah. That's the, yeah. They they sometimes they sound like it's like a, trying to be a radio transmission in a way or a, like a wind. Um, they're here. How close? Do you know how close they are to your location? Well, they're probably right outside my window or up up above the sky. I'm sure it's really super cloudy here, and they don't usually come down through the clouds for some reason. They said it messes with their telepathy okay, um, okay, when they're flying okay. the ships because that's how they fly their ships is with telepathy. Well, if they're, well, if they're positive, I'm saying to them, if you've been, uh, if I, I understand, I think I'm getting a better understanding that you were not, you were not in a negative situation 
that these mm -hmm. were these were positive beings. Of they saved people. my life. They saved your life. They saved your life. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a beautiful story. Um, and I hear the ship. The ship, the sound of the mm -hmm. ship is really apparent coming through. Uh, and mm -hmm. so I know it's coming through your end. And they can affect the your phone so we can hear the sounds of the frequency of that ship. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be up there, probably above the clouds, in a, a safe place where it can be. Uh, I'm sure right. they're able to hear. Uh, could they actually? Um, my I know my parents on my Astro ship. They have monitors where they monitor my show. Do your space people are they able to monitor you right now as you're talking to me? They can see us. Like if we were driving down the street in a car and they were way up there, they can see who's the passengers in your car. That's how good. It's like the bottom of the ship that I was in is like a big Google Earth map. Like like it, mm -hmm. it can zoom in. It's like glass. It was like clear glass, and it like can zoom in to whatever's down there. Oh, and wow. it like is, and or it can. And sometimes I've seen it as like a transmission on a screen. Like it, but it's kind of like looking kind of holographic. Yeah. But yeah, the I mean the. And when they cloak like the inside of the ship, I got scared once I remember because the inside of the ship looked turned inside out literally. So for them to cloak what's on the outside comes inside. So it looks like you're literally suspended in space. Wow. Yeah, I know. And um, that scared me. <laughs> yeah, it scared you. Yeah. I know that uh, they're very close. Uh, the space people on that ship are, are basically tuned into our program right now. And I, I think mm -hmm. they're listening to what I'm saying. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I can say I have respect for the people on that spaceship, the beings that are helping you, as long as you're positive yes. and loving and care, mm -hmm. caring. Uh, that's yes. important because uh, we've had the other side of negative ETs that have done things and we've had to send them off planet, the Astro Command. I've been one of the Astro Commanders involved with sending, uh, t taking implants out of people on my show and destroying mm -hmm. the implants. So I have, uh, I've been gifted by my father to do that but i can hear their spaceship it's getting louder and it kind of uh, adds a beautiful uh sound to the interview here because they're actually here above you above the cloud line and they're actually tuned into what's happening here i think it's a really interesting night what's going on here um it's like an ambient sound of it's a beautiful yeah. sound I know you can hear it. I feel them so, surrounding me. Like, um, yeah, they do surround it, And you. my mom had an implant, though, from them, but it, that was a good implant. So there are good implants. Um, it's no longer there, but I have before and after pictures. Before um, it was there, and then three, then, you know, she, then she had another um, scan, like two days after the experience, and then it was there for three months, and they were steadily trying to take it out and wondering what it was. It was right by her hip, and it looked... There was no point of entry, and it almost looked like um, right. like two so bobby they, pins. Right, so they're able to take out implants without physically doing like any any. But she could feel things. them pulling it, but not it, touching her. Not touching her. Okay, so mm -hmm. they so have they taken out negative implants uh, in people oh, that yeah. they're helping? All right, so that tells me a lot. So if a negative ET implanted you, they would come and take the implant out and yes. make sure it was taken out of your body. And they have done that to you. Yes, I have like marks from my body. Like I have like one mark that looks kind of like a daisy. Like it's mm -hmm. a scar that looks like a daisy kind of. And mm -hmm. I do get marks sometimes like that look like triangles. Um, I get weird bruises. Like I've even had bruises that look like hearts. It, it was just really So, um, has, so are those odd. bruises coming from other beings, not the ones that are working with you? That I believe it's them taking things out of me or something that doesn't serve me anymore. Um, but whether it be sickness, like I said, I never get sick. And like, I, I think that that like is what they do too. Like, I mean, I like never get sick. And my temperature mm. is always like 96.4. Like when I go to the doctors, which is rare, um, cause they like really don't like me to go around doctors too much. Um, yeah, they want you to go to doctors. Yeah. And they have a hard time getting my blood from me, like even through ultrasound and everything. It's like when they don't want it taken, it doesn't get taken, period. Right. No so matter what. Your, spa your space family, have you met, what's, what is your, uh, like I can tell you my mother and father, um, I mean, I have a picture of my, my dad on the spaceship, only you can see part of his face coming mm -hmm. through a rift. And my friend April in Vermont, come, they come in her room from the ship in two seconds. When she goes off planet, they open a rift, 
and they take her on the ship in two seconds. She's beamed in on the ship, and it's a huge ship, and they're uh, men and women, human from mm-hmm. different planets, and uh, my yep. and her parents, my parents, and we have Kit Kat, who's one of our friends here, Chesno, who's not in right now, I don't think, and then we have another person, Johnny of the Third Kind. We're all going on a ship together with her next year at some point, and that, now I've astral projected into the Ashtar ship, but I'm going to go physically, like you've been physically. They will come mm-hmm. to me, my father, and then they will take me on the ship safely, and I'll be on the ship for maybe an hour. Yep. And the time that we're on there seems much longer. Like over here, it's like seconds. Like yeah. I spent the day with my son and it was like, it felt like three or four hours, but here it would have been just like mere seconds. Yeah. So like if you're with somebody, they can take you when you're even with somebody because they, the person, they're not even going to know you were gone. Yeah, that's really interesting. So can you tell our audience all over the world and you're watching Encounters, my, my friend Starseed Booties, who I've known for a long time, who came up here, I am so proud of you and I'm so Thank honored uh, that, can you tell us what your parents look like? Yes, um, the my mother, I, I have um, seen her, my son had drawn a picture of her. I'm gonna have to send you the pictures that I have yeah. from many like experiences and then like okay. channelings that I did like for, you know, myself and like, I channeled a couple of times for like a spiritual group and was writing a book and, but it's not done yet. And so like, um, I was just, uh, I, I recorded, you know, I wrote down, I was writing as I was in it, like, um, with my eyes closed. I mean, I was in a a hip, more of a hypnotic state from myself, you know, like I can just go into that. Like I can hear them without even doing any, I mean, like right now I could, you know, like, but um, those at those times, I was really trying to go deep and heal some things. And I did get things healed. And I did get held by my mother, which was, um, she was blue. Um, she didn't have hair, but she had like some kind of like golden, it looked like mm-hmm. copper. It looked like gold wire, though, mm-hmm. not copper, but it was like she was, she, twisted and she, and in like was, different. She, she yeah. was blue, right? She's Arcturian. Right. Mother was an Arcturian. She's Arcturian. So is my father. And my father's mixed with um, like Pleiadian and the other ones too yeah yeah, like yeah. interesting oh, but she's really an elder beautiful. she's an, an elder, elder and she's pretty old um she wears a cloak she's tall um she and the the thing in the middle of her head there's like some type of crystal or something that lights it's like a light up kind of crystal oh, wow. and it's connected to her third eye so it's like really? literally connected into her head yeah oh wow and i've never looked- seen her without it now, when you see her, does she look, even though she's an elder, does she look like, compared to a human person here that She ages, looks totally different from a human. Does she look like 20, 30 years old? She, that, she looked pretty, I mean, she's pretty old. I mean, she's, I'm talking like, she's, pro, she's over 800 years old. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I mean. Definitely, in but, in, but in human but, but, years, she looked probably about maybe like 60. Okay. So she's eight, maybe 800, 900 years old. In yeah, space she has time. many children, and they, they live over 5,000 years. Some have even conquered death. Yeah. I mean, right. like, or the physical death, anyways. The physical, and they're kind of, she, she was physical seeming, but she was, I, they're physical, but they're almost like not translucent, but they're just not as, they don't have as much substance, I guess you could say. They're not, they're not as, de- they're not like, we have a dense, been dense body. Right. Right, but they their body, the Arcturian body, is less dense. It has a body, but it's less dense right. than the human body. Correct. Right, right. Like I could feel her, but she's. Yeah. It was a different kind of feeling. It was just like um, a more of an energy. You could feel the, the the weight of her energy, but you could see a form as well. But it wasn't translucent, but it was fluid. I guess you could say. Yeah. Like ripples, well, like water. You know, kind yeah, of in a way. Like, like my father. Um, a light beam. <laughs> the, yeah, light beam. Like my father, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show a picture here for a minute, and I just want you to see okay. this, and uh, I'll show you my father here and everybody else. Okay. I've shown um, a picture of this, and you're gonna see a little bit of it. Let me see if I can bring it up. Uh, let's see where is it here. This might be it here. If you look closely, this is yes. uh, from my friend April. You can see the human head. And if you look yep. on that side, you can see the human ear. That's yep. my father coming in from the spaceship into her room in Vermont. And he's about 
probably eight feet, eight feet tall. He's human, solid body, and uh, that's my father. And, uh, and you not, are you, know, you Arcturian? Uh, I think you I have actually, some in you. I'm pretty sure. I, I came from Mars originally uh, before I came here. I know I didn't just come from Mars. I came. From, I, I right. never asked my father where I originally came from, but I will. We did live on Mars when there know. was water there. Yeah. Well, Mars has about 10 to 15 million inhabitants on the planet. And um, so that's a picture for people that didn't see I can see hear it. him outside. That's the picture. I hear him father. outside right now. <laughs> that's, oh, that's beautiful. Just, um, let me, that, so you hear the space people outside your house? I hear something outside, yeah. Okay. Oh, God, I can really see the face of him. Yeah. I really so can. Look, yeah, he's been, oh, that's so beautiful. And that, that, if he were, there, if it was like, and eventually when I go on the ship, I will see him physically, his whole face, uh, which I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to. So I'm going to be beamed up on a ship uh, next year with about four in our group of five. There's three other people and myself and then April. And you're going to have to check April out. She's friends with Trey's 1111. Okay. You two mm -hmm. are going to get along so well. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Um, let me just go back to my screen here. And there's a lot of things with numbers with me. Um, like, like I was born, like, I mean, I know, I'm, I'm just going to say when I was born, I was born on May 17th, 1977 at 737. My mom was 17. Um, the hospital's address was 7, 7, 17, 17. Um, mm. Like, it's just, there's a lot of those things. Um, they said that with the numbers and everything's in threes for some reason with them. So like threes are my are threes, fives and sevens, um, mm -hmm. basically. Um, and my like my youngest son he was born like 109 2009 at 109 and he was nine pounds one ounce wow. like so things like that so like they said they were making examples of that kind of thing like mm -hmm. as you know it's part of your makeup and it means something so the yeah. like to con you know pay attention to numbers because they will message you through numbers they will message you through youtube i have gotten videos that i hold near and dear to my heart answering my questions that were youtube mm -hmm. on phones that had no battery in them and weren't in service for a whole year in my closet and i oh, would wow. hear it going off and i would find it and i'd get this video from youtube and then it would just go off and never work again um oh, wow. i have a lot of weird things with elect electronics like if yeah. i touch things they like bzz, or if i walk by a tv it goes like weird my phone battery well, goes dead constantly well, see, you know, well, that's because your energy level in your home and your energy is so amped up. And when I look at you, I see, if you look at her eyes, everybody, you can see your eyes are not just human eyes. Your eyes are space person eyes. Very much. Yeah, that's at, what they look say. Look at her eyes. You, and it's a beautiful thing. Your eyes are very much space person eyes. And you can see it if you Thank really you. pay attention, everybody. Look at her eyes, how beautiful they are. They're definitely space They change colors eyes. sometimes. Like they go yeah, from like yeah. brown to hazel um yeah they are they do weird things sometimes my eyes <laughs> mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing you know i mean we're gonna have to have you back on here if you feel like coming on so you have such a story to tell and this is only the first part of your story the first time you came on with a comfortable feeling and now you know who we are and you know that i'm also right. a space person i work in i have mm -hmm. space consciousness and i work in human consciousness i i integrate both being on here but i'm fully activated now and so i go into my space consciousness when i take out negative implants on my show i go into a space consciousness which is a little bit different yeah um they had me observe you a little bit oh yeah yeah what so that's why like i was they they what, like what it they and they like that they you like have it? love here like you that you're not that you guys like radiate love like rather than you know judgment mm -hmm. or hate um they like that they like the yeah. people in here. They're, that's how you come together and find yes. your family. I hear um, their spaceship again. The sound, their ship is making a sound yeah. again. I want them that's to know. a confirmation. Know, <laughs> yes. I want them to know that uh, the Ashtar Command, ask them if they know who the Ashtar Command is. I am with the Ashtar Command, the Galactic Forces they of do. Light. They do. They do know. There's many galactic yeah. refugees with them. Yes. They are listening. I tell mm -hmm. them that I send my love to them for and now I know them better and that we're all working together for the planet Earth to be in a place of peace and harmony and that the uh, planet will be, do they understand 
about contact in 2026. Ask them about that. Yeah, they just like let me know some stuff about that because I just like posted a, a, a UFO video and like I get messages when I get that because I was sad and I every time I get sad like I think it's going to be crucial to let you know how my memory got reactivated. Um, not yes. from no hypnosis or nothing. I was going through a really rough time in my life, a dark time, and I was going to unalive myself. Um, oh, and no. they, I, well, and this is how bad it was. And this is what reactivated my memory with, or in my experiences, because I had totally no idea about none of this. I've totally had forgotten. They, I had my memory wiped, you know, for my safety or my well-being at the time because my family did not understand so i think that's why i had my memory wiped um so like i was gonna do this and i like literally prayed to god you know and like i was like to myself nobody knew what i prayed and i was like literally if you need me to survive or you want me to be here like you're gonna have to show me like a light i can't re i can't deny you know that that's gonna be so phenomenal that i can't deny and they did and then wow. I said, can you do it one more time? I said, not to be rude, but I'm like, I couldn't believe that it happened, you know? So then they did it again the next night because um, I delivered the newspaper really late at night. So I had many experiences on that paper route. Um, it was life changing and um, I got all my memories back and it was the most beautiful thing I've ever been through. Hardest thing, but beautiful thing. They saved my life. Literally, I'm glad they, they saved did. my life. Well, so yes, I knew they, they were positive. Yeah, no, yeah, they, they did. saved your life. You know, yeah, they did. They saved your life. Because I was you, going to do that. I was. Well, I'm glad you didn't. I'm glad, sister, you didn't do anything like that. You're mm -hmm. you're definitely here on a mission to Earth. You're definitely yeah. here as I read your energy, as an Astar commander. Now I'm working in like uh, space consciousness. You're here to help serve, help the planet, so people can get ready for contact. You know that, right? I'm helping them to know that there's to yes. to feel love or to sh share and feel love. Um, and you know they want people to know that you're not alone and I, they know that you've had a hard time i had a channeling um and i posted a video about it um um if you wanted to check it out you can but it's it's like i it didn't make sense to me 12 years ago but now it's all making sense to me now um and it mm. kind of explains why you came here and had like such a you know a not you didn't belong and you didn't it explains a lot of things um, and I think mm. it would be helpful for some people because I feel like some people feel alone here, like sometimes, it's, and like feel like it, nobody understands. Oh, I think that to be true also. I think that it's- And you're not alone people, ever. Yeah, they feel alone. They they come here, they don't know what to do because they're not from here, they're having the human experience, but they also know that they come from somewhere else beyond earth. And then and nobody right. believes them. They're alone, they don't have anyone to- right. You know, I'm sure all of us have felt that way. I know you felt alone oh, too. Yeah, that's I know why I, I was doing it. what I was doing. Yeah. You know, we've all. I think we mm -hmm. all. It would, it would not be real if we weren't feeling that way at some point in our life, whatever decade that was. Um, mm -hmm. But it's such a beautiful thing to have you here because I think uh, we're all coming together, and mm -hmm. your experience is shedding so much light to people on my broadcast here. I have people all over the world watching this right now. And I also, my Astro Command Spaceship News channel on YouTube, all my shows are recorded on here, and they'll be on my YouTube channel. This show will be on YouTube for people on YouTube to watch the show and learn about what we're talking about. It's just a beautiful mm -hmm. thing, what you're doing. Uh, I, I'm feeling like I need to have you back on again. Would you be open yes. to doing another? I'd be open to doing that. I would be open okay. to doing that. And um, there is and there is things in the ocean. We, we do come from there to, um, you know, even if we come from the ocean, we like to fly around, you know, like, so like, it's not a big deal. It's kind of the way right. to keep us away from harm's way, you know, because they still have to watch their back, even though they have means to do whatever. They just aren't right. like that. Um, so they, um, you know, they can show up on radar, but when they come out and look for them, they're not going to find them because the clothing. Right. right they and they can move out of yeah. the way, you know. Oh, yeah. So, all the, um, all, yeah, all the ships can cloak. My, the ship my father's on, the Astro ships. They can cloak. Do, uh, so can the beings. Do, the beings. So did the beings know about the uh, the space cities that are in our atmosphere? The Astro Command has cities set yeah, up. Yeah, they're ships. Yeah. They're, they're and, the biggest cities. Yeah, and the, but there are city ships that are are stationed in cloak cloud areas where yeah. when they go on the ship, when they want to rest, they go into – I'll show you one of the uh, ships here. Uh, I think it, it's appropriate for me to show you this. 
Yeah. Let me show that you'll see this. And the and big I ones drop little pods, and then the they drop yeah. littler pods, and littler pods tell. Tell the. This is one of you the. Know. Here's this, here's one of the city ships in Vermont. This is earlier this year. This is from oh, yeah. like front April. That's a, yep. that's one of the ships. Um, yep. So they can go off the main ship into that and rest if they need to rest. Yep. They have everything provided, and it's it's stationary and it's in the clouds. Exactly. And you know the that, clouds. It's not actually a cloud, but it looks like a cloud. It's just that's it the like protective barrier to protect them from the radiation from how fast they travel. Right. Right. So, so that's that why it looks like a cloud always around them. But it and then it so it looks like a cloud, like literally, yeah. Yeah. So everyone watching the show, this is real. This is a real picture. And they're all over from Vermont. Yeah. And uh, they are and all they over. Up, and my friend <laughs> April was able to get a, a picture off of this, and it is protected. The ship is mm -hmm. protect. I mean, oh, the yeah. city ship is very well protected. So just so it's, people yep. can see that. And sometimes when people get pictures, it's because somebody forgot to, you know, they, they sometimes forget. There's like different cloakings for cameras, too, because they have a different lens than our eyeballs, you know, because we only see three dimensional. So, like, mm -hmm. um, we miss so many things that are around that we don't even see. Yeah, there's a lot. But you can feel can that. Like, you can feel the energy. But most times people a planet We're under hypnosis <laughs> kind of in a way we tend, yeah we tend to you know we tend to look at things in front of us but if we would spend time meditating and focusing on things above us mm -hmm. we would see more clearly that uh the space people from all over the multiverse are here now and they're just gradually and within going us. to and within us yeah and that's the and isn't it funny how they try to stop us from going within because for that very reason Right. They label it bad or something, you know. So yeah. you can't go within. Keep or going within. A bad thing. But you got to right. go within because if you go within, you're going to be yep. able to see who you are, and that's the that's the secret that they that our government doesn't want you to know about. The Pentagon, right. all these people involved. All the in answers are within up, you. They know that the answers are within us, and if everybody was to do this and go within, every one of you here, almost 700 of you here, some of you are doing it. Go within, learn how to meditate and connect with your star family you don't wait that's for called, anything to happen they call it disassociation but it's actually not a disassociation isn't a bad thing yeah. um they label it that way and they try to medicate you for that but th it's not that's how you go within it's daydreaming it's like that's right. how you go within it's yeah. not you're not mentally ill you know no, you're it, not. it's not that no they want to they want to drug you down and keep your mind from opening keep up you to from who you are. disassociating because yeah. if you do wake up then when the planet becomes liberated because now you know no now you see that the people controlling the planet are are not good people the people controlling right. the planet are the ones that exactly. are the negative ets that are in and they our had enough of that conscience. stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah, and exactly enough of that stuff so mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of good stuff happening here i'm excited about uh, Starseed Booty, I'm excited about you. I've known you since I came on here on and off a few times. Mm -hmm. But now to have this conversation and have you come forward, uh, I think is going to help a lot of people. I think it's very beautiful. Yeah, I, me too. And, I, and I'm glad I did because, like, I, I was fearful, but it was, like this was one of the fears I had to conquer, you know, like, because they, and they even say that, you know, like, there's going to be people that are going to hate you, um, but you're just going to, you're okay because just know that, what they're what they're painting a picture of you as is not what you are you know like right. even like your body is not your body you're not what you're not your vessel that you're driving around in That's you're right. you're something much more than that um and, uh, this is just uh, so you can breathe down here you know and, and millie mills says oh the ones in the ocean bad no the ones in the ocean no uh they're good the people that live in the space cities in the ocean for long long time way before any of us were here they have families they live in the ocean and this is not yeah. the earth they live in our oceans the indian ocean several different space cities exist around the planet earth in the oceans and there's like pockets areas. in the the floor of the ocean there's like pockets like yeah. that have like open areas and livable areas just like inner earth does and i did go to florida this um past or november or no october of 2023 and me and my mom and my sister all had my sister was a kind of a non-believer we i have video of it um in the plane going to florida we seen one that was you know uh, we seen a, a ufo by the plane and i kept seeing them flying around and my sister seen it and um 
she she's a believer now she could she was kind of scared at first because like she thought probably i was crazy a little bit you know but um she's seen it herself and it did crazy things in the air i have some video of it um when we were in the plane and then for some odd reason the stewardess said i couldn't film anymore and i'm like why you know um yeah so like we got reprimanded you know for filming and so i had to put my phone away and turn it on it was already on airplane i mean i was just filming it and yeah it was a no-no and i guess did they know did they know what was what you were filming out there Probably. I'm pretty sure they knew exactly what I was filming. Oh yeah, they did. I'm sure the pilots in the cockpit knew exactly. They were seeing well, exactly. Well, in that whole trip, I had two phones break. Literally, just stop working after I filmed the plane one, and then when I got there, I got a different phone, and then we had an experience that night. We got there, and I had the picture oh, wow. of. I on my page, I have a picture of the being that came out of from the ocean floor and popped its head up out of the water. Really? I have a picture it's on my page it's like a green it looks like a green bright light and then you can see the being it's like translucent but this it was in um the at panama city beach florida by russell pier um it was way out there too out by the pier i mean you can see it and i have video of it but i did put it up and i got i got a whole account banned for it oh no really well they didn't want you to show the truth see but they let me see show the picture but not the video of it surfacing Oh, but really? I still do have the video. And in the video, the time frame, you can tell we lost 15 minutes of time that we have no yeah. explanation for. And the next day, we lost four hours of time on the beach during oh the daytime. Oh, my gosh. And I lost so, the shoe, too. And I have no idea now, where. <laughs> now, when you lost the time, uh, now that I understand the story, is that when you were taken on the ship? We were taken on something. And then what's funny is that they have live webcam of like every day in Panama City Beach um, on Russell Pier. And that is the only day that is missing of that year uh, that mm-hmm. it's no longer available. I, I don't have it because I tried to get the live webcam because something happened that night and it's missing. Do you think that was a different group of beings that took you that you had no. missing time with or with? It was the same no it was them because ever since i remembered um like when i started having memories of my childhood with them they told me that we will meet face to face by the ocean well i never had been to the ocean in my whole entire life that was my first time being to the ocean and Mm -hmm. i knew that they were going to come and i could feel it because i seen them on the plane and then i i felt it right when i got there oops so i don't know what happened i felt it right when i got there i don't know why things happen (laughs) um i felt it right when i got there and um then i started feeling like this vibration through my body and like a really strange black mist came and surrounding us and then there was like this eye in the sky that looked like a big orange moon but it was not a moon and i did get one picture of it and it and I inverted it and it looks almost mechanical in there, but, um, and it set like the sun, which in what we thought was like, you know, behind some trees. But then when we woke up in the morning, there was no trees there. That was all ocean. And there was um, a top, but there was like um, unmarked um, tinted black windowed trucks on the beach, talking to people the next morning, there was fighter jets out. There was, there was um, helicopters. um, And when we went on the pier during the day, the helicopter, the black helicopter, like just hovered over me on the pier, like, really, and it wouldn't leave me alone. And like, it was like, follow it, like, everywhere I would go, it would just like stop right above me. And I was like, this is weird. And my mom's like, we're going back to the hotel. This is weird, you know, and my phone broke and all that. It it (laughs) sounds like the, the government, the people involved in covering this stuff up, were there to watch what was happening they knew that you were a different person you weren't just merely and i was asleep person. the whole rest of the trip like i could not keep my eyes open like i was just like i was almost like i was drugged or something it was really weird yeah. and um my sim card went missing out of my phone as well and my phone oh broke my again so i had to get a third phone That's and the crazy. only reason i was able to get the video back is because luckily i sent it to, to one of my friends that's a ufo investigator um before i before the phone just stopped working and so like Mm. that's the only reason i got it back but my sim card did go missing and the screws out of my glasses too i don't know why but um yeah they were just missing and And they were folded up like they were fine (laughs) so i i get the feeling these black uh vehicles that were tinted that they could be i i'm not assuming this to be true but they could be men in black you know the well they were the mivs they were so the MIBs mm-hmm. are not happy that the positive contacts you're having are happening, and they are trying to interfere and monitor you, correct? 
Right. And see, my sister's a non-believer. She was a non-believer, but um, when we would get back from like shopping and stuff, she would be like, somebody's been going through our stuff, you know, and I'm just like, so then we tested it one time because we were there for a week. And um, it's weird because we were there for a week. None of us got a tan um, and none of us have any pictures of the whole trip. And we know we took pictures. Yeah, it's really, really weird. We know we took pictures um, and none of us have any pictures. And my phone broke three times and SIM card missing. And because um, when I went to replace the phone, they said that I should have had a SIM card. And I know I had one in there and it was gone. Yeah. And I was so yeah. sleepy that whole trip. It was just wow. really weird. Like we were not awake all the way. It was even my sister and my mom can vouch for that. Well, you know what? We're going to have if you can come on tomorrow night, we're going to continue the story here because it's mm -hmm. a long one and it needs to be yeah. heard. <laughs> And uh, I think my audience would love to hear more of your story. I know I want to. And um, so tomorrow night we get on at 11 uh, okay. and uh, we'll have you back on. And uh, I feel now there's a, kin a kinship here. There's a friendship here. Yeah, your I feel comfortable people, now. And your space people know I work with the Ashtar Command. My father's on a spaceship and mm -hmm. I'm here on Mission Earth in this human form, but I'm not from this planet. And uh so yeah, yeah I definitely uh, we'll definitely have you on i want everybody to follow me and follow starseed booties uh thank you uh, i appreciate and, you guys and every if you have not followed on the show follow me on my main page just press the follow button all 666 of you and uh please follow uh and again you, uh, there's a beautiful story here and we've only i've learned so much just listening to your story because when i first started hearing it so maybe I can help you. But then I found out that, no, you're having contact with Arcturians. Your mom is an Arcturian. Uh, you, you have uh, connections with the Palladian. Uh, mm -hmm. This is just a beautiful story. And uh, I, I really don't know what else beings. to say. It, just I want, I want to thank your space people that are with mm -hmm. you, your family members that are on the ship. Thank you for helping her. Uh, and... Uh, they know who the Ashtar Command is, and uh, I am one of the representatives that will be speaking uh, to the people of Earth uh, before contact happens on an Ashtar ship. Uh, I've seen yeah. the inside of the area where I'll be speaking. We're going to be speaking on a transmission system that will overtake all the broadcast systems on the planet. So when this happens, every single network in the world will be taken over by the Ashtar Command, and I'll be in front of a camera or something broadcasting and overriding every transmitter. And yes. we'll talk more about that Saturday. Um, yep. So I want to have you on tomorrow night. Starseed Rudy, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank I you guys you for making me feel comfortable, and I appreciate it. And yeah. you're and, loved. Uh, Just know that. Yeah, yeah, it's very important. I want you to write down my friend's name, Friends with Fairies 1111. Okay. Uh, I want, and uh, I want you to, when she's on, if you see her on, follow her and just introduce okay. yourself, tell you that you're on my show. And you are gonna, you're gonna love each other. It's just that beautiful. Okay, good. I appreciate you guys. All right. Yep. And now Thank I'm you. gonna get ready to go off planet and go okay. to sleep as well. Thank you so much, okay. your space family. Thank you. Hello to you. Thank you for being there. We heard your ship making sounds. Uh, so thank you so much. We appreciate <laughs> you. <laughs> it was thank beautiful. you. I appreciate the you guys. Sounds were like very hypnotizing. People were listening to the sounds of the spaceship. Uh, so yeah. They're thank calming. You. Yeah. Yeah. Thank All righty. Take care. Bye. All right, sister. Bye. You too. All right. We're going to do this here. And uh, I really, this has been an amazing night, a really an amazing night. And I thank everyone for finding our show here. This is why this show is number one in what we do, because everything I talk about here is real. What's going to be happening in 2026 is real. What her story is, is real. The beauty of her story is real. And uh, it's just an amazing time. Follow my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is Ashtar Command Spaceship News. If you're not following it, this show will be on there. If you want to rewatch the whole show, you can watch it 10,000 times. It's that good. Uh, it'll be on my YouTube channel by tomorrow. And all my shows for the past two years, most of them are on my YouTube channel, Ashtar Command Spaceship News. Uh, please follow me. If you're not following me now, please do so. Then you'll know when I'm on the air live. I'm on at 11 o'clock at night. On Saturday night, please join us Saturday night, really importantly, for Ashtar Command uh, Q&A. My friend April uh, and myself will be uh, co-hosting the show. And uh, April goes off-planet off, off planet, 
uh, almost every couple nights onto a spaceship of the Astro Command. And our parents are human. Uh, our parents are about seven and a half, eight feet tall, and they are on the ship. My email address is cmdraleon at aol.com. I'll repeat the email if you have any a spaceship footage that you've been recording or you want to talk about your encounters uh, on the show one night, uh, please uh, let us know. And let's see here. Let's take a look here. And uh, you can actually uh, email me at cmdraleon at aol.com. And also we're going to take uh, people out here. Okay, I'm just uh, taking people out. I just took that person out. So I'm taking the trolls out right now as I'm uh, speaking. And uh, we are blocking the trolls from the show. Good thing to be the host. I got rid of that Rick Blair person and one other person. And if you come in here doing that on the show, I will block you because I am the host of the show and I will take you out forever. I took out, I took him out, Bonnie. You see, they don't understand. Hey, yeah, yeah. See, they don't understand. You're dealing with somebody who cares about what they do here. And uh, that's what we do here. Being a professional broadcaster for 21 years on radio still at NPR Pacific Radio, WSUFM. I took the Venus person out too. I got both of them out. And if there's anybody else out there that's going to do something, think before you do it because you'll be taken out. All right. It's time for me to call it a night. Uh, we'll get to uh, more of Starseed Booty tomorrow night. And we'll also do interviews with other people. But there's so much to talk about with her story. We love all of you. I want to tell everybody that we do end our show with love. We love everybody here. Uh, Ryan, uh, we'll do it tomorrow night. I got to get some sleep here. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being here. You're all beautiful. And uh, we'll catch you all tomorrow night. Take care, everybody. Be well. And as I say, meditate. Get within yourselves. Learn how to do this. Take some time to look at the skies above you. Go to the beach. Look at the space above you for two hours. And connect with your star level, star energy, star families. Everybody has one. You just have to learn how to do it, you know? All right. Take care, everybody. Many blessings to you. This is Commander Alion, host of Encounters at 1.22 in the morning. We're going to call it a night. Take care, everybody. Be well.